slash and cast. Um, I have this halo over me and I'm wearing my exorcist shirt, my exorcist crew shirt. So that's pretty cool. Oh, there's an upside down cross on there. I hope, I don't know if that was intentional, but that's sacrilegious. They, they printed it wrong. Look at that. I don't know what to do about that. Yeah, uh, that looks like shit. That's okay. That looks like shit. <laughs> Well, that's what happens when we do this at the crack of dawn. I know the sun coming in there. I got stuff going on. Look at that. I don't even know. You don't well, even know anymore. I don't know anymore. You want me to? I can spin a different way. That's all right. I don't. I don't mind. <laughs> I mean, as long as I look good, that's all that matters. Everyone's looking at you anyway, buddy, and no one gives a shit if I'm even here. Nah. Nah. Hi, everyone. This is uh, the 50th show. <laughs> Five. Oh. I'm 50. Uh, and I can kick and I can stretch <laughs> and I can kick. I just kicked <laughs> off my sandal. <laughs> <laughs> Call the cops because I'm 5 0. Yeah, book them, um, Dano, because I'm 5 I'm 5 0. Yeah, I got that wrong. It's early for me. I'm not thinking right. It's morning. Uh, not early, actually. I get up at the crack, but uh, I've been running around. Coffee still percolating. Percolating. And um, I'm so distracted by the halo over my head, but whatever, dude. Everyone can get over it. No one watches anyway. They just listen, right? Some people just listen. Some people deprive themselves of our good looks. You know, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, yeah. what anyway. is that villain b little banner pennant there? What is that? That's a that's from Queens of the Stone Age, their album <sighs> Villains. Gotcha. Uh, came with a uh, I got a uh, the vinyl of it, like super duper double album vinyl special deluxe awesomeness, and it came with that and a bunch of other stuff. So groovy. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, man. So, uh, so, so, <laughs> fifty shows. I don't know how we got here. I do. We, we did forty nine before this. Oh, good call. Yeah, there you go. All right. Basic mathematics. Speaking okay. of basic mathematics, can I do an early get off my lawn? Please. So I went to where was I the other day? I was at. Uh, at the grocery store or something i can't remember but the uh, it's just i think we've talked this about this before about kids today just don't know basic mathematics because everybody does mathematics yeah. on their phones blah right. blah blah so they don't have sure. a concept of certain especially giving change right so my total was 16 dollars and 36 cents right i had two quart i had 16 dollars two quarters and a penny and I gave mm -hmm. that to the cashier who it completely dumbfounded her because <laughs> it's 1636, but she's looking at 1651 and trying to figure out why I'm giving her 51. Right. Right. You know, in order okay. to get 20 cents back and not get more pennies. Right. But she Being was, two dimes. she was completely at a loss. <laughs> anyway. It's it just it Man. blows my mind. It blows my mind. And it happened again literally later that day. I went to the foot doctor and I paid in cash. And there was a similar situation like that. And she, she called herself out. She was like she like looked at it. She looked and she's looking at them. She stops and I go, It's whatever the change was. I said it's 70 cent or whatever. And she goes, Are you good at math? And I go, basic math yeah <laughs> like and she goes <laughs> she goes ouch you really called me out and i go <laughs> i'm just like well i guess you know but right anyway yeah so people are people are wowie wowie get off my lawn and learn some basic math i mean math. Let, let's let's be real 
I mean, well, do they teach? I, they don't even teach math in school anymore, barely. I don't, I don't, don't know. Attention. And I don't think kids <laughs> care. I mean, if you yeah. were to say, you know, what's nine times seven, most of them probably wouldn't know the answer. You know, I mean, because right. they'll be like, uh, well, hold on. Let me get my phone. Right. You know, but, um, you know, I, I was never good at algebra. I, I mm -hmm. sucked it out. And, 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 I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if algebra is actually used in anything is, is do do. Are there people that use algebra in real life? I don't know. Are, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Algebra is used on a daily basis all over the place. You just don't know it. Yeah. I mean, but like for guys like you and me, we're never going to use right. algebra. Uh, I use algebra when I make stuff. Sure. Really? Oh, yeah, absolutely. When I've never in my stuff, life since high school finding the center of a circle so you can have a perfect circle and find the actual center. So when you cut stuff, like there's all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I use it all the time. So you and Maynard use it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Fractions, you know, all that perfect kind of circle. Stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. See, I've never had, I've never had any thing in my life where I've needed to use algebra. So I'm glad that it is right. being used. I am. That actually makes me happy that it's being used. <laughs> Right. It's because. used every day in engineering and so that's what I all assume, little, like scientists little, and shit. Well, you know, people that make your toys and your oh. and your and your DVDs and all the things that you collect in your house. It's all made with algebra. Sweet. I like algebra then. And and and, <laughs> and I'm impressed to know that you are one of these people that use it. That that thank you, sir. Yeah, that's that's good to know. It's good to know. Okay. There's still a few of us left. There's there's still hope so, for the future. Still hope for the future. There's just some old school left now. Um, let's see. All right. Since I'm on a little get off my lawn roll, should I just go for another? Sure. I'm tired of this. Since we're on the cashiers, I'm tired of every one of them everywhere I go asking me if I want to round up my order to give yeah. to something. Right. No, I don't. Right. I'm sorry. I don't. <laughs> if I'm going to give to charity, I'm going to give to charity. I'm not going to let right. Panda Express give to charity for me. Right. I is mean, it think because about you don't it. Trust it, them, or is well, it because well, well there's, there's I don't trust them personally. It's kind of like the, the don't trust jar. thing. You well, know, there's the, the change jar at Seven yeah. Eleven where you dump it in. It's like I don't believe that they're giving that away. They're fucking yeah. taking that home. They're going to the coin op machine at Ralph's and it's after work and cashing that in. That's what I. Yeah, think. I I don't trust them. And yeah. why should Panda Express get the the write off for the charitable donation? <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. If I'm yeah. gonna donate, I'm gonna donate. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I donate. I, I give a lot to charity, actually, on a yearly basis to ASBCA and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And 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 uh, I agree with you. And it's everywhere. It's like yeah. everywhere. And, and, you and I feel like you're being judged because they say yeah. it loud in front. You're in line of people. Would you like to round that up and give to the children's hospital of what, you know, or whatever? And you're just like, and you go, no. And yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and and the rest I mean, of the line like, goes. Oh, what a dick! Like, wow, wow, bro. You don't like children, bro? It's like, bro. Uh, I helped raise one hundred fifty-two thousand or one hundred eighty-two thousand dollars for the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. I should be kind of good right. for life. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. but you know, that's neither here nor there. I still give to charities, but I'm just saying, I, I just feel like it's a. Yeah, I just want my my orange chicken. Can I just? Yeah, I just want to get out of here, man. Yeah, I just want to. I just <laughs> yeah. want to. You know. Um, well, that goes along with the tip thing, doesn't it? I mean, the, that's the, the tip, other thing. Now, now, like you tip, you tip them. Well, it's included now. Like you pay somebody for a service, right? Yeah. Or a meal or whatever. And the tip's included. And then there's a line for tip. And then there's another thing now where it's like, you want a custom tip on top of the two tips? You want to tip some more? And you're like going, yeah. by the time I tip everything, if I did it, you're getting, you know, a 60% tip. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the other thing when I bought <laughs> even at like Panda Express or something. I'm using that as an example, like a thing will come up when you're paying to add tip. That's like add tip right. for what? For this person right. to, 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 to take my money. They didn't do right. anything. Each person that scooped a little bit into my tray, are they getting a tip? You know, <laughs> right. It, it's uh, I don't know. That, that shit pisses me off. Get off my lawn. Right. I have two. Wait. 
I only have two that come to mind. Okay, go. You want to you want to cover all yours first? Let's let's go. Okay, two that come to my mind. One is, do you notice, or is it just me? When you go to a restaurant, you sit down and you have dinner, right? Mm -hmm. And the guy's on you because you know usually they're trying to flip tables or something or whatever it is, right? So the guy, they're on you. They come that well, especially nowadays, they're on you so fast. You're like. What do you want? You're going, well, I, I just sat down. Can I look at the menu? Well, what do you want to drink? Okay, well, I'll have this. Okay, great. They come back in two minutes. What do you want? Well, I want to have my drink and look at the menu. Okay, no. and then you put in the order. Now the food's coming out. Boom. You already have the food. You got the food. Okay, great. All right, I'm eating. As you're eating, you take one, two bites. The guy's on you. How is everything? Is everything good? Are you okay? You want anything else? No, I just want to sit here and eat, man. It's like, go away. Can I just eat? You know, just give me 10 minutes. I eat fast. Yeah. (laughs) Keep coming back. Keep coming back. So they're on you and on you. And then you finish your meal. And then they disappear and your check doesn't come for like 30 minutes. You're like, where's the freaking guy? I want to get out of here. I'm full. I got SBS now because I got sleepy bear syndrome because I'm all filled with the carbs and I had too much bread and I ate all the food (laughs) and I ordered dessert because you pushed it on me. I had a couple drinks. I'm sleepy. I want to get out of here. I can't find Jackson because he's running around. I don't know what he's doing. They just disappear. You can't get your check. I'm like, what the hell? So that was one that, that it keeps happening. The other one is have you noticed when you go to the gas station, you get gas now? Remember when you you, you go, let's say you go inside, you go, give me $40 on number five. And you go yeah. and you put gas and it's pumping, pumping, pumping. And then when it gets towards the end, like the last dollar, you know, it slows down yeah. and, 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 and trickles into your tank. And so it used to be like the last 10 cents. And then it became the last 50 cents. And then it became the last dollar. Now it's like for the last $2 of your pumping, it's going at this terribly slow incremental fucking, t- and you're sitting there. And I'm like, I got to go. What am I standing here for 10 minutes while I'm waiting for a dollar 50 to go into <laughs> well, my tank? It drives add, me mad. <laughs> to add to that, because I always pay, it's the one thing I actually pay with, with my debit card because I hate going in and waiting in line and, and because I want to top it off and you never know how much it's going to be. So I'll use my debit card and it's like, it's like, is this a debit or credit card? It's it's like a debit credit card to be like, I'll hit credit card, you know, because if I put debit, then it's going to ask me to put my, my code in Right. credit card. It takes a second. Would you like to add your rewards number? No. Would you like to get a car wash today? No, no. (laughs) Will you yeah. like a receipt with this transaction? Yes. It's like, Jesus, can I just pump some Do you gas? Want it printed or emailed? Yeah. <laughs> printed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. It takes forever. All these yeah. hoops, hoops I got to jump through to overpay for gas. Um, okay. Now, this is just a minor one, but okay. I, I, think everybody, I think everybody can relate to this that has a dishwasher. <laughs> when you're taking the dishes out of the dishwasher, why is it mm-hmm. that whatever is going on with dishwashers and the drying system, it can never dry that little bit of water on top of the coffee cup. And when you pick right. it up, it <laughs> spills on you. And gets all the dishes wet. Yeah. And you. Cause you know, yeah. the top of the coffee cup is always yeah. beveled. So it yeah. just sits in there and you pull it out and it, you, you always spill it. Yeah. So, so every and, glass. Yeah. You get some, they got to figure that out. Yeah. Okay. Also, another thing, (laughs) when I go to the restroom, I tend to like, after I wash my hands, I like to rinse my face. I just, it just makes me feel good. That's weird, but okay. It just, it's just something I do. It's, it's, I don't know. I like to rinse my face. In a a Burger King, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. (laughs) I get hot. I don't know, but there's never goddamn paper towels. And I look over and I'm yeah. like, I got a drenched face yeah. and there's a blower. Yeah. What am I going to put yeah. my face you under stick there? your head in it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> and the blowers don't work anyway. I covered yeah. this on a different get off your line. The blowers don't do anything. They don't dry. They just push the water around on your skin. That's all they do. And then, okay, let's stick to the bathroom theme here. People, 
it, what drives me nuts is when you go into a packed bathroom, especially at an airport, you know, where there's usually, you know, it's quite busy. And you got to do traffic. number. Yeah. And you got to do number two. And mm -hmm. a dude goes in front of you and goes into the toilet just to stand and pee. And it's like, bro, there's got people back here that need to break one off. And you just, oh, you just want privacy. You know what I mean? It's like the, these guys that just don't want to be standing out there with the other guys for some reason. Maybe they got like a little penis or something. But bottom line is we got a shit and you're just standing in there, you know, when there's urinals that are open. That's the thing. When there's urinals that are open. Then, then why don't you just use a urinal? What, what do I bend over just and take your... a shit in the urinal? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just pull your pants down and sit down in the urinal. <laughs> I'd really be showing that guy, wouldn't I? Um, <laughs> yep. All right. So back, last bathroom rant. So now, gender neutral bathrooms. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is proper gender neutral bathroom etiquette now? Mm -hmm. Can we leave the toilet seat up? If we put it down, are we being insensitive? I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know what that is. I don't, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm something to think about i haven't I, I haven't been in a gender gender neutral bathroom yet you haven't they're everywhere now no oh no, jesus I haven't, I haven't you're in haven't la and you've never been in a gender neutral bathroom oh my god i don't go out in la man i don't do anything here i stay hmm. home okay well oh uh, i don't know okay. what to tell you that's a good one though i don't i'm gonna I don't get know. off the bathroom rants um okay group texts people stop sending group texts i'm sorry yeah the ha i got a couple happy new year group texts mm -hmm. fuck me all night long people <laughs> responding to the stupid group text yeah happy new year mm -hmm. to you too people i don't know i don't want i don't give a fuck this mm -hmm. person i don't know saying happy new year to the jackass who sent me the group text all right stop it with the group texts yeah i'm with you on that i don't want to be on your i get group texts i'm like what why am i getting Please leave me off of this. Yeah. When I'm on and there's set, no way to get every, out of it. You can't get out of it. <laughs> and it drives me crazy. And then when I'm on set now, this is annoying. Just mm -hmm. a sidebar. When I'm on set now, all the ADs communicate with departments via text now. So your second AD, your third AD, the PAs, everyone's texting you information constantly all day and i can't work and they're group text so they're 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 texting the costume department the makeup department the camera the, and they're going this is what's going on. and you're like oh my god so now i have to give it to one of my people in my department and keep me off i'm like don't keep me off it because the entire you have three four hundred people group texting all day on a movie set drives me nuts okay group text get rid of another me. one stop it with the electric bikes all right <laughs> i mean, mean the kids, scooters the, the, no electric bicycles have you seen these things they're like all the rage here in orange county all, every seen fucking, these things dude every kid has one and they're uh -huh. basically motorcycles really i mean they're, they, right. they look like they look like cruisers but they fucking mm -hmm. fly and they're electric mm -hmm. i mean when i was a kid you had to have a driver's license to ride a moped What's the right. difference? Because that takes you gas. Still do. And this is, yeah, and this is electric. That's the difference. Right. Yeah. These fuckers are going all over the place of this thing, and they're flying <laughs> around like like there's like biker gangs on electric bikes. <laughs> and electric let's face parkour. it, our kids today don't do enough activities as it is. So now kids we got to let let's help make these fuckers even fatter by giving yeah. them electric bikes. Right. Don't pedal. Yeah. Don't uh, freaking pedal, which is exercise. You know, <laughs> stop it wow. with the electric bikes. All right. This stop. this one I'm starting. I'm really going deep into things that bother me. I've a, I'm a fan of SNL. Do you watch SNL? I you know I hate watch it occasionally. Yeah. I hate watch it occasionally. I used to be a huge SNL guy, especially in the beginning and then up through the 70s 80s mm. some of the 80s and then the 90s was good like it it, it it's had good sections mm. lately it, it's i i hate watching it 
every time I watch it, I go, why am I watching this show? <laughs> it's awful. It's not funny. I don't want to bag on anybody that works on the show. It has its moments. It. There there are moments. It has but, its moments. But yeah. Very few and far between. I do feel like it's suffering from political correctness. Uh and hip and hipness. It's, yeah, it's well, so I mean, be, it's always th- tried to be. Yeah. They're trying so hard to make that cast diverse. Yeah. It, that I think it's hurting the quality of the comedians. I mean, I, I don't think I don't think they're and picking the content, yeah. I don't think they're picking the best people. I think they're right. I mean, cuz if you look at I mean, they've got every ethnicity, every, you know, sexual orientation. Right. I mean, it's like and some of those people are just not fucking funny. They're just not. No, they're not. I mean, no. and I think they're afraid to fire them because of backlash. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I think they kind of painted themselves in a corner on some of that shit. Yeah. Um, but well, what it used I was to be getting... an edgy show. You yeah. Know, it used to be this rebellious. That's what it was started out being was this rebellious, almost national lampoon esque type type you know thing where it was it was against the grain it was it was you know anti anti social you know so to speak you know and 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 it just now it's just hit the hit hit the hip topics every well week beyond all that little rant the thing i was actually gonna say bothers me and it's Mm -hmm. so stupid but it's something that i notice and now once you notice and maybe once i point it out to everybody on here they'll start noticing Mm -hmm. it and it'll bother you too Mm -hmm. have you ever noticed if you watch from the very beginning of the show Mm -hmm. when they come out of the commercial to go right into the very opening which will be whatever the opening monologue is that or not monologue opening the, the, yeah, that goes into the live from New York. It's the yeah. very it goes black. The screen goes black, and you immediately hear the audience laugh. <laughs> and then it, and then then they start. It's right. like that laughter bothers the fuck out of me. It's like <laughs> why? Because it almost seems like it's 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 they do that on purpose. We're gonna start the show with laughter. Like you're right. gonna hear it's our so audience. funny. You haven't even seen anything. Yeah. Yet. And then we're they're gonna, laughing. We're, like we do something really <laughs> funny that only they get to see, and you're hearing yeah. the result of it. And now we're going into yeah. our show. Yeah. It it's energy. It's it's like, let's give the audience energy. Let's give the yeah. people at home energy. They have a person there yeah. making them laugh, warming them up for the start of the show. So it's you know, it's canned almost. And it's just the fact that it happens every time. Now it's just it's that lost that bothers you. It's lost any effect <laughs> it's supposed to have is all i'm saying right right um okay. all right yeah see well this is dude i'm i'm just an angry person i guess i just like you're, you're very was, very angry the laughter of others annoys me <laughs> yes people having a good time i mean come on <laughs> so i'm gonna do probably my own standalone uh get off my lawn episode in regards to my travel thing i told you about because it's it's right, a long one it's so epic <laughs> it's so it, it's so epic and it, it deserves told its, its own show it is it deserves its own little mini it's a, it's a get off your lawn solo album as well it, it really is, is. Yeah. this is my this is my ace freely solo album this isn't yeah, a peter chris right. this is an ace right. freely right you're um, not leaving the band you just no. have some other things you need to get no off yeah your... i'm staying in the band <laughs> So anyway, let's talk, let's get into, I think people like horror that watch this show. So let's start talking about some, so what's, well, first off, what have you okay. been doing? What, what have you been up to? How was your Christmas, New Year's? Mm, mm. Mm. Um, Christmas was lovely. Um, I was in Atlanta working on um, a certain movie and, uh, and uh, we still, I came home to enjoy Christmas for a couple weeks, New mm. Year's. It was great. It was quiet. I stayed quiet. I stayed under the radar. I didn't socialize. I stayed home. It was great. Watched stuff and worked <laughs> on stuff shop and i read and i ate too much and gained all my weight back which is great i've been doing Uh, that too i'm gonna get rid of that i'm already on the 
on the boat of getting rid of that for a week, yeah. last week now. I, I, I see the boat. Um, I just not, I'm not on. I see it. I see the boat coming right. in the distance. It just hasn't docked. It has but, not uh, docked yet for me. I, I got on the boat, so I'm, I'm working on that. But it was a good Christmas. It was lovely. It was really low-key and mellow. And for whatever reason, I really wasn't into Christmas this year. And I've always been into Christmas. But I'm, Same. I'm, I'm, I'm a Christmas guy. But this year, for whatever reason, I just wasn't really feeling it. And I yeah. don't know why. Um, but it was, it was still good. I came home. I have to go back to Atlanta in a couple of weeks to uh, finish, finish a show um, for, for about two, three weeks. Um, but it was good. Um, I finished my thing uh, diorama poster diorama, which I'm super excited about. I think it turned out really good. Yeah. So that felt good. Hopefully you're um, seeing it right now spinning in front of you. Anyway. Isn't it great? Yeah. Um, look at that. Ooh, look at its back. Ooh. Ooh. Look at the lights. Look so at that. That's lights. what was going on there behind that. I always yeah. wonder. Yeah. I, it was um so that was good. That feels good to finish that. You mm. know, now I can now it's off my table. I can concentrate on something else. Get that what thing else? off your plate. Off my plate. Uh it's been good. Yeah. I'm excited to finish this movie so I can get on to the next thing. And um Oh, was um, that a hint? Was that a hint? Did you drop a couple puns? Was that a hint? No, no, oh. no, I did not. Uh, but I wish. Uh and reading in what else? God, what else did you ask me? Is that it? Is that Christmas, New Year's, There's blah, blah, blah. Gone. Christmas, New Year's. I've been getting stuff in the mail. We'll talk about it. I got I got this. I want to discuss this yeah that. oh did you get you got the hardback i got the hardback yeah you know so i or because you told me you had time. that yeah um you know i expected my signed copy from tommy but i i guess i should just have to settle for being mentioned in the book um you know but, it's funny when i ordered it i was like well i should just contact sean because sean can probably get these probably <laughs> signed and then i went I don't want to assume that. So I just, and I, I want to contribute to Mr. Yeah, Wallace's. As you know, did I. And I, I ordered mine this morning. In fact, I was a little oh, bummed though. I was really on the fence of the trade paperback, the hardback. I wanted the hardback, mm -hmm. but the hardback mm -hmm. says it's going to take like three weeks to get here. And the, the That's trade weird. paperback said it'd be here tomorrow. Oh, yeah. well, I, I got mine really quick. I, actually, it said it was a pre-order. So I was like, oh, I got to pre-order it. So I did. And it showed up like a week later. So Halloween 3, Where the Hell is Michael Myers? The Definitive History of Horror's Most Misunderstood Film by Tommy Lee Wallace. Forward by Tom Atkins. It's, uh, I started reading it. It's good. I'm enjoying it. I'm about 30 pages in. It's mm -hmm. a fairly easy read. You know, Mr. Wallace is a good storyteller um obviously uh and there's a lot of information a lot of a lot of it so far is 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 mr wallace's history where how he where he came from how he got into film hmm. uh not so much about the movie yet uh, but i'm guessing there's a context to it as to what when it leads up to this and why it is what it is but um it's pretty cool lots of photos uh, fan art there's script um pages and there's storyboards in it and mm -hmm. um it's it's really cool I, I i recommend it so far and um i'm excited to finish it i'll probably finish it this weekend so i'm psyched to get it i'm psyched to get it i got the new fangoria which has leather face on it i got a, a bone to pick with that there's a nice little i, I did i contributed again another article i wrote oh. Um, well, that's awesome. With the uh, spoilers and splatter in here, uh, a new new section that uh, they're doing. And Phil, the editor of the magazine, gave me another shot at oh. writing. So, uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I, I got a bone to pick with that issue, uh, but I do have a question for you as well. Something that just reminded me. Um, but hold up the cover. Let's see the cover. The cover again. My buddy Gary Poland did this artwork, and I I have to say it's amazing. It's very but cool. They're they're talking about the history of the trailer. My bone I know. To, my bone to pick is if that's what the article was. Why would you have him holding the chainsaw from the film, the one I own, and not mm -hmm. the chainsaw from the trailer, which was a different chainsaw? Ooh, that's a deep cut for people. It, the the uh, that's a good question. Why don't yeah. you contact Phil and ask well, him what the hell? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have Gary's a buddy of mine. So next time I see him, I'm gonna be like, brah. Right. Yeah. 
No. Right. Um, What's the, the question I had for you that I just, it popped in my head because I saw Eric Porn had posted uh, a thing yesterday and I saw a picture in there. Who ended up with the, the kid's body? The, the prop <laughs> of the kid, the kid, who has it? I have it. We have it. We oh, have you have it? have it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was because I I was looking at that going. I wonder who got that. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's there that that one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't that funny? That's like one of my best. And also, we got one of the best kills in uh, the twenty twenty two per oh. per Fangory magazine. Which one? Which kill? They have a list of of best kills, and uh, we got number. Um, where are we here? Although we did get mentioned for that kill with the kid. Number seven is the Willie the Kid tongue cut off. Ah. <laughs> there. We got yes. number seven for for cutting that guy, bashing his head in and cutting his tongue off, which was hilarious again because that thing was, again, supposed to be a special feature on the DVD. It wasn't meant to be in the film. so <laughs> It wasn't? Um, no. It, 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 a little trivia then. No. It, it was... It was it, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was. It was meant to be a special feature, uh, uh, like a deleted scene type situation. Mm. It wasn't gonna be in the movie, but um, I guess test audiences and 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 the studio liked it so much they they left it in the film. So, ah, well, I finally <laughs> heard from from Rowan yesterday. Corey himself. Lovely. Oh, great. Yeah, we had a nice conversation last night. Oh, and- great. So you talked to him. Yep. So I think some fans might be seeing him finally coming out to visit a convention somewhere someday. Yeah. We've been texting God since before the movie came out. Right. But he never really (laughs) responded. It was really awkward. And then I saw him at the, the after party and he's like, Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I haven't gotten back to you. I'm going to text you this. You around this weekend. I'm like, yeah, Mm -hmm. I'll hit you up this weekend. That was what October 14th or something <laughs> right yeah, yeah whatever that was yeah, yeah. um uh-huh. and here no, we it was are like october 7th or something like oh yeah it was that. early and then yeah. so then he mess. he finally got back to me here january 5th <laughs> <laughs> and uh so then he's like oh you know are you around to talk tonight uh or, yeah i said yeah i'm around you know, hit me up didn't didn't respond i'm at the movies last night seeing megan literally mm-hmm. just went through all the trailers the movie is just starting he calls me <laughs> you had to take it and i just went hey man i'm in a movie can i yeah he's oh yeah dude call me after i'm like okay so then i'm thinking man i'll probably <laughs> regret not taking that call because he you know because right because he's not his, gonna answer because his friends that. have told me he's notoriously hard to get in touch with <laughs> he is, um yeah. but but i did call him back and he answered, mm-hmm. and he's like, hey, man, yeah, so how you been? But, oh, dude, oh, dude, can I call you back in, like, one minute? Yeah, no problem. Like, three hours later. <laughs> uh, of course. Yeah, but then we <laughs> end up talking. Yeah, he's, such, he's a cool dude. Um, so, yeah. anyway, hopefully yeah, you guys will be seeing him at a convention soon. So That's awesome. It, it sounds happy. He just he's has a, questions, you know. He is a good guy and he's super nice and super pleasant, super funny. And uh, you will enjoy meeting him if you get a chance to meet him out there. So if anybody ever puts out that scarecrow mask back there, I bet you he'll be signing a ton of those. That's right. Hopefully somebody gets on that. Get on that, Tots. Get on that, Tots. Put that out so Rome can sign them. And me too. I need my three dollars or whatever it's gonna be <laughs> um so let's see uh trailers since i'm talking about i they had a, there was a lot of trailers last night the renfield trailer mm-hmm. which what i'd like to hear your take on the renfield trailer and then i'll tell you mine well well i'll tell you <laughs> He's going to tell. tell He's going to tell. He's going to tell. He's going going to tell. tell. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I don't know. uh, 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 (laughs) I, I mean, to me, I, I, I I can wait to see it. I'm not, I'm not excited to see it. Um, it looks like Buffy the Vampire Slayer to me. Like every the whole time I'm watching it, I'm going, 
wait, I saw this. It's called Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like, it, it was, I saw this. Yeah. Like, long time ago. It was almost, except with more, you know, John Wick style, you know, situation. But uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know. You know, it's hard. It's hard to judge it by a trailer because, as we all know, most of the time you see a trailer for a movie and the movie's nothing like the trailer uh, these days. So uh, I, I don't know. Uh I, I it looked a little, I don't know, cheesy, but maybe it's funny. I don't know. It, you know, the comedy horror thing is is a tough nut to crack. Very few people do it well, so I'm I'm curious uh, about that. Um, uh, so I don't know. I, I I I reserve my judgment on the film, obviously, but the trailer, I was like, man, I, I wasn't that thrilled with it. Okay, here's my take. All the leaked photos I saw of Nick Cage as Dracula, I thought just mm -hmm. looked so terrible. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh my God, this is going to be so bad mm -hmm. that I was pleasantly surprised when I found mm -hmm. out it was a comedy because mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. thought it was going to be him trying to play Dracula. Oh, I see. Okay. So I think that pleasant surprise of, oh, thank God it's a comedy uh, right. yeah. made me kind of optimistic and you know yeah yeah you know. so okay well you know it might be really good I'll, I'll certainly probably see it you know all right evil dead rises evil now dead rise. i'm really curious what you think of this obviously because you're in in the midst of a competing exorcism type of <laughs> possessed <laughs> movie uh mm -hmm. what did you think of the trailer um I have feelings. It seems to be getting mm -hmm. a very positive, like from mm -hmm. the fans, very reaction. Positive. Very positive, yeah. But I don't know. Go ahead. Um, I I actually liked the trailer. I yeah. I liked it. I I watched it. I was like, oh yeah, I want to see that. But mm -hmm. I'm an Evil Dead. I love Evil Dead. I love Evil Dead Two. I love Army of Darkness. Yeah. Um, evil dead 2 is one of my faves um yeah. i wasn't crazy about the remake of evil dead it wasn't something that i really enjoyed Ooh. um but uh it. it had moments it had moments that i was like yeah that's cool you know it had moments um uh um uh, and i i i saw the trailer i liked it i thought it was cool it wasn't anything really new it was very derivative of the, the the remake of evil dead and also recently smile which i watched i saw smile recently but uh it's very same kind of vibe you know all those trailers seem very similar to me they're all the kind of the same vibe and they hit the same notes and same beats and and all the demons are acrobats you know they're climbing yeah. walls and hanging off chandeliers and they're crawling up this and they're hanging upside down screaming and i don't know why everyone's got to be like all the demons are parkouring all the time in these movies i said yeah. that like all right i get it if you if, if you can't just be scary standing there it doesn't make you scary or hanging off the ceiling it's yeah it's, let's, can we get rid of that you know so that that you know it's all these little nitpicky things as a filmmaker i have problems with but all in all i think it looks cool i'm gonna see it you know i'll i'll, I'll check it out well i definitely agree with you on the smile comparison on the one sheet, which a lot of fans ripped them on, like, you know, cause mm -hmm. it's almost like a direct rip off of the smile one sheet. Mm -hmm. um, my issue is, uh, I, I, it, I, I have a hard time with them jumping back and forth between serious and goofy. Right. And, you know, it's, it's like, you know, the first evil dead, although, you know, when I saw it as a kid, terrified me. You watch mm -hmm. it now, you can laugh at things and and realize mm -hmm. there's some slapstick in there. But it, it wasn't so as as intentional as Evil Dead Two was. You know, and right. going more yeah. with the comedic air, and then three, yeah. and then the series for sure. But then, I mean, because you got you got those, and then you got the Evil Dead remake, which I love. I loved the Evil Dead remake. Um, mm -hmm. I love that it was totally serious and it was, I thought it was great. And I would have mm -hmm. loved to have seen a direct sequel from that. Um, mm -hmm. And then you got this Ash versus Evil Dead, which is just total slapstick. Mm -hmm. um, but then you're trying to go back to being hardcore serious again. I'm just kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, 
pick one guys, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. it, or call it something else. I don't know. I, I know the trailer looked good, but again, I agree with you. Nothing I haven't already seen before. I, I, you know, I hope I and really, then, hope you know what? Uh, yeah. That being just said, because I you put it mean, in an apartment building, isn't going to make it, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I don't know. I, it, it, it just, it's not that I have to see something I haven't seen before. It's all been done. And that, that's yeah. a bad way of putting it in on my part. It's, it's less about that. It's more about, I, again, it's my same complaint all the time. What's the story? Like, give me, yeah. I, tell me a good story. And maybe there is a great story. It could be a really cool story, you know, that, that you don't get from the trailer. So I'm hoping there is a great story. The thing of going back to what you said about Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness, Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness was very calculated balance between horror and comedy and slapstick and and a very comic book um tongue-in-cheek um, satire you know it, it it was it was a perfect balance that's why those movies work so well mm. um and they were meant to be that way that's the evil dead again that's near and dear to my heart because it's so over the top and crazy yeah. that that comic relief keeps you on the ride you know, it keeps you on the right. It, it just, it's it's a it's a way of of escalating and keep going up and down. It's a way to stay on that ride and enjoy the entire thing because it's either funny or it's insane or it's so over the top or it's crazy or it's gory and the and the lines and the and the way it looks. You're just it's like candy for your for your movie going soul. You know what I mean? And now now these you, you know i don't know they're I, I feel like they're too serious like they're just oh, it's just take it easy it's yeah. it's the evil dead okay <laughs> it's a book that possesses people you know kind of like well, halloween going back to halloween it's like people it's just let's take it so seriously everyone calm down it's just a guy in a mask he's running around well like, just i always have it. given yeah. halloween credit for not getting silly i mean mm-hmm. jason got silly Freddie mm-hmm. got silly. You know, mm-hmm. Myers, the character has always been Myers. And, yeah. you know, they, they never made it l- like any, com- I mean, yeah, there's comedic things. He, you know, David did things in the movie that were kind of funny, but it wasn't, mm-hmm. they never made Halloween silly. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, or at least not intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. You could say resurrection <laughs> was unintentionally Ooh, silly. Right. Um, but, um anyway uh so speaking of horror and comedy mm-hmm. uh, you know i did see megan and it it kind of toes that line it's i was a little disappointed that it wasn't more batshit because coming from the writer of malignant and the director of uh housebound or is it housebound yeah um those are both you know they have zany comedy and horror you know it's I thought it was going to be a little more wacky. Um, And uh, I think it could have used a little more of that because it starts Mm -hmm. off the way the movie starts. You're thinking, oh, this is going to be kind of wacky, I think. But then it Mm -hmm. chills out a bit. And it's actually kind of takes a while to get going. Um, Mm. The other thing is it's kind of, I hate to say it, kind of a ripoff of the Child's Play remake with the mm-hmm. ai doll that bonds mm-hmm. with the kid and protects the you know it mm-hmm. it uh and to be fair i know a lot of people hated on the child's play remake i think mainly because the doll looked like shit mm-hmm. i thought the child's play remake was kind of fun and i mm-hmm. actually liked it more than megan i have mm-hmm. to say but i wow. enjoyed megan i thought it was entertaining mm-hmm. but much like you said about the hanging off of things and doing all this weird shit. Like the one scene that I thought was just kind of didn't make sense to me that just seemed like they were trying to do something that looked cool that I didn't think really looked cool that you see in the trailers when she's on all fours, kind of like a dog mm-hmm. going after him. Mm-hmm. Just to seem not necessary at all. Like I would have rather seen her go all fucking T-1000 and go after him you know what i mean i think that would have been creepier um but overall it was it was fun i mean it was a fun Mm -hmm. film and i think it's going to make a ton of money so it is going to make a ton of money it made 2.7 million last night wow 
I mean, oh, which is I gotta, really good. I got to get off my lawn from last night. Okay. Fucking people, man. This this couple in front of me. They come in. First off, I didn't see. I didn't really see them come in. They sat about four rows in front of us, and there was nobody in mm-hmm. between. No, we were in the very last row. Mm-hmm. They're talking full volume the whole time during the trailers. Trailers are happening. She's taking fucking selfies of herself and like with the flash. And I mean, we're all like, I'm looking around at other people, other people looking around. Then they're taking, I mean, like a photo shoot going on and he's on his phone talking to somebody. And I'm like, this is like the nightmare couple right here. Right. Mm -hmm. Fucking nightmare Mm -hmm. couple. And, and so I'm like losing my shit. And Nay's like, I'm going to go complain. Because she goes, if this is still going on when the movie starts and the lights are totally mm-hmm. down, I'm gonna. And it, they did. He's still on his phone. Yeah, man. And he's holding it like this. Oh yeah, bro. And like, and I'm just like, what the fuck? So she goes to complain. She comes back in and she's like, they said there's nothing they can do about it unless they actually see them doing it. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? Then they'll come in and look, you know? Right. Yeah. So then, uh. What did they do? Oh, so then they they took another selfie with the flash, like leaned in together. And I go, put your fucking phone away. Are you kidding me? Like that. And somebody else chimed in and goes, yeah, man. And they just kind of slumped down their seats and they finally put them away. (laughs) But Um, then they're talking all the time. And then I start hearing this. And then, dude, they brought a baby and the baby starts crying. I didn't see they had a fucking baby with them. And get it out. (laughs) Yeah. Two times during the movie, she drops her cell phone on the floor. And like the second time it goes into the row ahead of her. So she's like, put your fucking phone away. You wouldn't be dropping it on the floor. You know, oh, dude, I wanted to strangle these fucking people. I I would have lost my mind. I would have walked up to the both of them and said, get out. Just get out. Get out. So that's uh, yeah. People suck, man. I hate people. They suck. Yeah. And and what movie theater was it? What chain? It was it was a Regal. Yeah. Yeah. I don't go to that shit. I won't go to a Regal. I won't go to an AMC. I won't go to any of that shit. I'll go to Alamo. I used to go to ArcLight. I go to places where people go there that love movies and respect movies and respect yeah. each other. That's the only theaters, and there are a couple of them. There there are few and far between. But I yeah. will make a point to only go to those theaters. Otherwise, I watch it at home. Yeah. So we do have a couple special guests today on our 50th episode. And one of them is about to enter our dojo. What? what? Yeah, our dojo. <laughs> he should be coming here any second. Enter our dojo. Um, today's first special guest is the legend, Mr. Dick warlock dick warlock Woo! michael myers from halloween 2 oh the assassin God. from halloween 3 same oh. stunt man from you know from everything kurt russell pretty much ever did he's here are you ready i'm so ready i'm what a career this guy's have you ever I met him wait i've never met mr oh, warlock here we go no. i'll introduce you here, here we, we go, go. exciting Whoa, there he is. There he is. Hold on. <laughs> it's a hell of a picture. Okay, and we just need you to unmute yourself. Oh, yeah. And, and there he is. There it is. Hello, Hello, Sean. <laughs> this is Chris, Christopher. <laughs> Hi, Chris. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Warlock. How are you? It's a pleasure to meet you. A, a complete complete honor and i am a huge oh. huge huge fan of yours and yeah yeah i know and uh <laughs> and oh my god so thank you so much for being here we we yeah. appreciate it so much yeah. that's quite a collection back there yeah oh, we yeah. got stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah you guys got stuff <laughs> where's this located in, in your studio chris or is this uh in sean's place i am i am in my home in burbank california Okay. And I'm in my okay. home in Orange County, California. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. This is the this is what we surround ourselves with. <laughs> yeah, well, you can see my background is pretty simple. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> there you go. That's perfect. Don't move. Yeah. Don't, Don't touch it. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, were you at uh, uh, were you at age forty? You were at age forty, yeah. right? Yeah, I was at age forty, but I, we didn't meet. It was a little but, crazy yeah. that weekend. It cost, me, it cost me a few bucks to get there because you know I wasn't invited, but I had to pay my way in, and and it was expensive. Um, <laughs> uh, He's a comedian too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love it. <laughs> no, the guy up in my left hand corner, he was gracious enough to get me an invite there. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a, I well, think he knows people. somebody. He knows people, yeah. and <laughs> you have a little something to do with that. With yeah. that Halloween franchise, a little bit, just a yeah. little bit. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you know this, but I met him when he was just like in his genesis of this whole stuff. I mean, he had a few years. I understand now if, by looking at his website and his, his his blogs and things that he had been going prior to when I met him. But he was still kind of a neophyte in the whole thing. But boy, has he grown! Yeah, he, he's grown. I should have gone with him years ago, but. I'm stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stubborn. <laughs> I don't move easily, but anyway. Yeah, yeah um, it's that. funny. When we met, I don't remember what, it was in the, it was definitely, it was in the 90s, I, I believe, when we met. And we, we end up, we were going to do a business deal that was completely separate from conventions. And we had so a meeting. Be- you said that, yeah, we were at the corner of Devonshire and uh, Tampa at a restaurant. Where we like talked. a Denny's or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it was a Denny's, but we talked about doing figures or something. Yeah, we were going to do a, because I had a resin kit company at the time that I was doing. We wanted to do a, a like a signature model, you know, Dick Warlock, Michael Myers figure. It ended up never happening. Um, mainly because the sculptor just never got around to getting it done. Mm-hmm. Um, but we had that meeting and I, the one thing I remember more than anything is here I am just a big nerd, you know, excited to be having lunch with Dick Warlock. And he just like casually says, Hey, you know, the hospital, we shot the Halloween two ads right down the street. And I, my eyes just go, you know, <laughs> and, and he goes, you want to, you want to go over there and I'll show you around. I'm like, duh. <laughs> <laughs> and he took us over to the old VA hospital and walked us around and showed us where he had shot. Man, and I was like a kid in a candy store, you know, it's amazing. Yeah. Sure. Well, your, your, your career spans so many years and so many different genres and so many different franchises too. And yeah. so many, some and like classic films and um the, the one that i mean well obviously i'd love to talk about halloween 2 i'd love to talk about halloween 3 i'd love to talk about you know uh, so many things that you've done with carpenter and, and other people i mean it goes on and on I, outside the genre of clint eastwood like so much so many things but i i have to ask this real quick just to get out of the way better off dead I saw that you. I don't, I don't you, even know, remember doing a movie called Better Off Dead. But I really, <laughs> I don't know That's what. Hilarious. I don't know who's in it. Those things amaze me. I know there's been one time when I got a check <laughs> for, for my son Billy. It was uh-huh. his residual check, but it came to me, uh, and I think he may have gotten one that was meant for me at his place. Uh-huh. But I never, uh, I, I, I never heard of that movie. What's it about? Who's in it? <laughs> John Cusack. John, C- John Cusack was in it, and 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 it was a teen movie back in the eighties, and it was it's a great I, it's one of I love the movie, mm. and uh, it's a it's considered a cult classic, and it was directed by Savage Steve Holland, I believe, and and uh, uh, I don't I don't know what you did on it, but I don't care I don't care because it's on your credits. Here I am messing with the my... camera again. Yeah, wait, yeah, but. Uh, uh, Go ahead, John. Oh, I, I was going to say, because I'm looking up the, I'm looking it up now, because I remember, I remember I brought my Better Off Dead poster and, uh, and I had you sign it, Dick. And I think you, you said the same thing, like, what is this movie? <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> you are credited in it. Um, yeah. I know that, are there that Tom, little... Tom Morga worked on it. Fred Lerner was the yeah. coordinator. Yeah. yeah. And, a Michael Lerner, his son, Michael Lerner, 
doubled John Cusack and he did the fall off of the bridge into the trash, the trash truck. Johnny Hawk was on it. So a bunch of guys I know and work with Me worked too. on it. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody. Well, yeah. You know. Amazing. Uh, it's, and so many of these franchises and things like, are, are there a lot of films like that, that you, I, I mean, there's a that, handful that, are, that, that you're like, oh, God, I don't remember doing that. Yeah, I may have <laughs> remembered 20 years ago, but today, right. not so much. <laughs> <laughs> but how, there's so many times you do a, a, a day on the show. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Uh, sometimes you never you never meet the, the, the original cast, the first cast, because you're on second unit. Right. Shoot some car chase or explosion or somewhere, some some other place. So you never meet them. Right. There's a lot of there's a lot of us that work on those kind of you know and just on dailies. Yeah, so, I'm the same way. Work. I've 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 worked on movies where I've only been on like a day or two. I go in, I do a couple makeups, I'm out. Yeah, but you know it shows up, and people always ask you about that. They focus on that one thing, and then you go, I don't remember doing it. I was only on it for a day, you know. But yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Well, the ones I remember the best are the Disney movies, you know. Uh, I remember Camelot because that was interesting. I mean, it was it's so different from what I was doing. It was horse work because mm. and, and other stuff, swords and things. But but it, it was a different kind of movie than the Disney kids and stuff that we were doing at the time. And right, and, uh, Rat Patrol. I don't know whether you ever remember Rat Patrol. Yeah, uh, I the two know. jeeps in the desert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a lot of those. You know, I did a lot of TV episode episodic stuff. Uh huh. Universal was big for me, and Warner's was big for me. Uh huh. Were you I contracted? Really, was that? Yeah. Were you contracted with them, or just no, happened just, to do a lot of work with them? Yeah, just yeah. No, it's the it's production design. I mean, the production managers usually the guys that call you. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, that was be, there were a few coordinators. Uh, uh, Yak Canut's son uh, was a, was one of them that was a coordinate coordinator on westerns. You know, but I never did any real. Westerns. I mean, I did Gunsmoke and Bonanza, but you know, as far as as Westerns, which I really wanted to get into when I got into business, uh, never got to do those. I got stuck at Disney, and and believe mm. me, I don't I don't mind getting stuck at Disney. It was almost ten <laughs> years I worked there. Almost wow. every every movie, you know, there was a few that I didn't. I wanted to work on the Don Don Knotts, Tim Conway movies, the Westerns that they did, but. Mm -hmm. I was doing one of the Herbies or something. Apple dumpling. It's amazing. Yeah. And then there was the other one. Is it, is it a second apple dumpling? or? But it was another one with those two. Yeah. I think yeah. It was like the apple dumpling and rides again or something. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I had, a, I had a chance to work with both of those guys at, at other times, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, when did you people. work with Don Knotts? Uh, on Herbie uh, Goes to Monte Carlo. Oh. And I also worked on one of those TV extended movies for TV or something that mm -hmm. they did. They did three or four of the uh, Mayberry things, you mm -hmm. know, later on. And, and I uh, saw him then, and I can't say that we interacted much, you know, it was good morning and that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. I, I doubled the crazy guy, and I can never remember his name on the regular uh well, on that show, but he was a, a regular on the on the uh, yeah. on the Andy Griffith uh, show. Yeah, well, not Andy. Yeah, on Andy Griffith. Wow. Uh, let me let me look at. He was a wonderful, regular cast member. I were, I saw him in Jerry's Deli on Ventura Boulevard one day. Uh -huh. This was long after the show was over, and I and I think I was one of about three people in the entire place, and he was sitting in a booth right behind me. And he was going on to the waitress at how they were beating him out of his residuals. And I mean, he was he was angry about that, you know. <laughs> I thought, oh boy, I hope that never happens to me. They did. It happened to a lot of people early on when residuals came around. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah, I think they started in, in the sixties, mm. early sixties with the residuals. Yeah. So a lot of those shows, the old black and whites and whatever, they, they didn't get those things. They didn't get right. Those so and worked, how was you worked with Clint Eastwood? Yeah, yeah, but you know, a little bit. It, it's it's nice to say I worked with Clint. I got to meet him. We, we you know, it's you, you meet a lot of those people. Sure. You shake hands, and uh, it's like when I worked with John Wayne. I, I, you shake hands and you do your thing, and you go home. You know, right. you, 
he was directing, so we did interact a little bit. He mm. wanted me to say my lines like him. Uh, but getting back to uh, Clint, I, I was hired as a safety guy for a fire burn because I I, uh, I said, I wonder if to, to uh, Buddy Van Horn, I said, you, you think Clint had signed me a photo? He said, well, I don't know. Pretty soon he walks over with the photo, about an hour or so later, he walks over with the photo and I looked at it and says, what did he do on the show? <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't remember. <laughs> You know, I was never really in front of him on camera or anything. Right. So, yeah. What did he do on the show? Oh, that's amazing. I liked Clint, though. I liked him as an actor. And yeah. I you know, want to read about him, I like. And, do you yeah. still have that signed photo? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I keep all that stuff. I have more signed photos from actors and actresses than I do stunt foot pictures. I mean, I have some hanging out of an airplane and on fire and things like that. But uh -huh. amazing. How did you end up working? How did you end up doubling uh, Kurt Russell? The Disney. picture was computer war tennis shoot. I'll give you the history there. I was called in. There was a time in my in my career when I worked both extra and stunts, right? So mm -hmm. I get a call to go in and do an extra job. It's at Disney Studios. I went. They took me into the building, and it turns out it's the wardrobe department. And there's a desk set up there and a camera. I didn't know what was going on. And uh, so the, the the director, who turned out to be a mentor for me, his second unit director, his name is Art Vitarelli. And, and God bless him. He was so much. He was, the man was very good to me. Anyway, uh, he told me what you're going to be doing here is they're going to put some clothes on you, a Yankee uniform. And, uh, and uh, Mr. Disney is going to be narrating the opening for the movie or for the show called Willie and the Yank. So he'll come in and he'll we'll work through that. So the next thing you know, here comes Walt. He goes in and sits down on the edge of his desk, which they usually do, you know, to, to, to talk about the episode. And uh, he said, we're going to rehearse it. So we rehearsed it one time and he said, now, Come here, young man. I think he called me young man. I walked over and I said, yes, sir. He looked at me and he said, now, you're not going to upstage me, are you? I said, would I do that? And I, kept <laughs> I didn't know it for eight years. But Art, after Walt had passed away, he came to me one day. We were on the set somewhere. It might have been in Paris or whatever. And he said, I'm going to tell you something. He said, I didn't want to tell you this back then. But Walt took a liking to you immediate with it, immediately with the wink. And he said, he turned to me and he said, get everything you can get on this kid. I'm going to make a star out of it. Wow. Uh, he, he didn't want to build me up if it didn't happen. So not knowing that he ever said that, it didn't build me up. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't, right. didn't know about it. But I thought that was pretty cool. That anyway, is cool. The next time I encountered... Uh, starring the movie, the little TV thing we we did, he was introducing was Willie Niang with Kurt Russell as the star. So yeah. that, then I became aware of Kurt Russell. I didn't know about the kid that I I laughed at when he kicked Elvis Presley in the shin on a movie called It Happened at the World's Fair. But I mean that's a little connection. But uh, the next movie where I met Kurt was Computer War Tennis Shoes, and I was doubling him on that. And his dad came to him and said, you ought to put this kid in your contract. He said, your mom and I watched these things. And this was later on, but uh, it, we couldn't tell you from him. And, and so anyway, I was nine, almost 10 years older than him. But his dad, he said to his dad, he said, I don't know how to do that. He was 18 years old at the time. We celebrated. He started the movie at 17. He was 18 when when we finally finished, uh, and he said, I don't I don't know how to do that, Dad. His dad said, I'll take care of it. So he went to his agent and said, put him in this contract, me. And so thereafter, for 20 some odd years, whenever they called Kurt, they were obligated to call me. There were a couple wow. of movies that I didn't do, Overboard and uh, Captain Ron. But the rest of them I did with him. And uh, believe me, that I mean, 
outside of working at the studio for 10 years, just being able to leave and double him and so on. It just, uh, I can't, I, you know, I can't say enough about it. It was, that was the best years of my career. Mm. Is there any particular reason you didn't do those two films? Did you just not like boats? <laughs> no, I was working for John. What's that? I was working for John Carpenter. Ah, uh, uh. yeah, or somebody, but I think it was John at the time. And I, you know, I didn't want to leave that. And in the movies, he, Kurt and I talked about it. He said, "I see no stunts in there. Maybe I fall in the water or something." But he said, "There's right. no big deal." So I gave the I gave the jobs to two other guys. You know, I had a little a little tate to tate with with John. Uh, well, maybe I shouldn't go into that. But anyway. <laughs> you can cut it out. It's okay. Well, no, I mean, I mean, I I, I had an opportunity to talk to him after a, a brief, you know, uh, being apart, and uh, I told him, I said, that I'm going to tell you something. I said, uh, I think I was in the middle of crying at the time, or almost. I was so emotional about the whole deal. But I said, between you and and Kurt Russell, Deborah Hill, and uh, Art Vitarelli, I said, you guys, uh, you guys made my career, and I want you to know that, and I'm really mm -hmm. grateful for it. And mm -hmm. I turned around and left. And I hadn't. I think I talked to him one time after that. Uh, mm -hmm. The first time I saw John, he had a line that you wouldn't believe. It was out the door down the street, and. Uh, the next time I saw him, he was at a table right across from me in a small room. I thought, hmm, <laughs> that was odd to me, you know. But anyway, yeah. Do you know exactly how many films you doubled Kurt in? Do you know the total? You Off the top of your head, or no? no? No. What was the last one? Tango and Cash. Tango and Cash. Mm. Yeah. It was computer, computer work, tennis shoes, uh, a barefoot executive, world's greatest athlete. Now you see him, now you don't. Yeah, uh, there may be something in between Escape from New York and the thing. And uh, Big Trouble? Yeah. yeah, Big Trouble. And it was one after that, and then we did Tango and Cash. Or Tango and Cash was before that. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that was a misunderstanding that I really regret. I've never been able to uh, really talk to Kurt since the last time we talked. Mm. It's, uh, well, you know, it's one of those things. There's two sides to every story. Sure. And when whoever has the microphone is the one people tend to, the story they tend to go with. Right. Those two stories, I didn't have the microphone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That stuff, you know, over time, you know, you have a career that lasts a long time, you know, things like that are bound to happen and it doesn't really matter. It gets to the point where it doesn't really matter. You know, I've had issues with people in the you past. Hate to, and, you hate to cut yourself off at the knees when you're with people who really love you and, and sure. they take care of you. And sure. because you're a fool sometimes, which I can be. Mm -hmm. uh, we all can. You, you can really, you can just. You know, really. I mean, you can you can just limit your career right around the mouth. Hollywood's not a friendly place sometimes. No, it's no. Easy to shoot yourself in the foot. <laughs> so, well, it's it's just very. It's also a very fickle and spineless yeah. business. So you yeah. know, it, it, I wouldn't it, have it any other way. If I had to do over again, I'd do it over. I may do it a little differently. But, you know. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It was a well, gift to me. I mean, it started out as a childhood dream when I was. I was drawing stick figures, the cowboys shooting, you know, t -t 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 the bullet goes over here, and then, you know, yeah. paper. And uh, I'm, I should save some of this stuff for my autobiography or my videography. They're doing it at, at the end of uh, January. I got oh. guys that come into the house and do a, a videography on my life. And then they want me to do a tabletop book similar to uh, Kim Gottlieb's. Mm -hmm. You know, take a photo and then do a paragraph mm -hmm. underneath it all about what that photo represented and mm -hmm. was there and so on and so forth. I was going to ask you if you were ever going to write a book or do or do anything like yeah. that because that that it, I, I it can't would... do it by myself. You no, know, of I, course I, not. But I, I started one and I get up as far as mm, 
just after my Corganville years and getting into my first movie with Marty Robbins back in 1960. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but I can't get any further. I can't get into the career thing because then you start really talking about yourself mm -hmm. as a public figure. And I, uh, you know, get someone else to do it. <laughs> I mean, this, this is good because, yeah. I, you know, you, you're asking questions. But for me to sit down and try to ask myself questions, it's, it's yeah. very difficult for me. Yeah. Did you ever read Ted's book, Ted White's book? No, I've read Keynes and, and what else? Uh, Somebody else's. Oh, Jesse Wayne's, but you don't know Jesse probably. Mm -hmm. he's, he's the little guy that got stabbed in the, you know, he stabbed Loomis in the stomach. Mm. Or he was he was Loomis being stabbed by me in, mm. in the oh. uh, fire, you know, in the hospital room. So he doubled, mm -hmm. he doubled Loomis. Yeah, yeah. I had him doubling. Yeah, he doubled uh, a lot of people for me. Well, you know, it's funny as I have... Uh, I have some uh, continuity Polaroids from Halloween 2. I know you've seen them before, but I've always wondered who it was that was doubling Loomis. As I have this Polaroid of, of the guy doubling Loomis laying on the floor after he was stabbed. And I always yeah. wondered who that guy was. And I, uh, what was his name, name? His name is Jesse Wayne. Jesse Wayne. Is he still with us? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He lives uh, in Montana. Uh, where is it? Yeah, not Deadwood, but it's Billings. He lives in Billings, Montana now. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Off, off chance, similar question. Do you know who doubled Lance, Lance Guest? Because I also have a picture yeah. of that yeah, guy I'm, laying in the pool I'm, of blood. You know Dick Farnsworth? Are you familiar with Dick Farnsworth, the, the Fox, the Gray Fox movie? No. He, he was the star of the Gray Fox movie. He was also in... Um, anyway, the former stunt guy, his son is a stunt guy, uh, and and Diamond was the one that uh, that did that. That, that, that doubled Lance? Yeah. What was his name? Hmm. Diamond Farnsworth. Farn Farnsworth. Diamond, Diamond Farnsworth. That's yeah. a hell of a would, name. Yeah, who would name well, that? Diamond. <laughs> I don't know. It's like me. My, my, my name is Lemming, and, uh, you know, the <laughs> guy Deming in the business at the time, and and Teddy's got our all our names mixed up. Uh, that's a call service, you know. Well, that, anyway, that's a, that's a question. Where did the name Warlock come from? Well, uh, the guy, the guy, I met a guy at Corganville. Corganville was a movie ranch in Simi Valley, California. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you know the name Ray Crash Corrigan. Mm -hmm. He's an old-time cowboy movie star, yeah. Three Musketeers, and all that stuff. Now, that, that's not the Three Musketeers sword swash, uh, swashbucklers. It's the uh, candy bar. The cowboy. Anyway, <laughs> Crash had a ranch, and he, he could see it coming. So he built a town, then he rented it back to the studios. See, a lot of a lot of stuff shot there. Gene Autry, the Range Rider, and all those all those things. A lot of black and white <clears throat> movies. Uh, and he worked there, and and I went and now see this goes back clear back to the beginning. Anyway, Jerry Vance is a gave guy that gave it to me uh, back in 1960 after he saw the movie Warlock with uh, Anthony Quinn. Henry Fonda and I think uh, Richard Widmark, I think they were all in it. It was a Western and that was the name of the town, Warlock. He said, Dick, he said, you got to change your name to Warlock. He said, they can spell it wrong, W-A-W-O, but he said, they won't mispronounce it. He said, I don't think they'll ever forget it. <laughs> so, okay, so I went to the Guild a few weeks later and I changed it to Warlock and it's been that ever since. I don't, my credit is Lemming in my first movie, Dick Lemming. And that was that was Ballad of a Gunfighter. Marty wow. Rock. I never asked Ted where he got the name Ted White, because his real name was Alex Bayuth. But yeah, I, ne I don't know where he came up with Ted White. I don't either. I don't mm. either. But Billy goes by by Warlock. Lance yeah. goes by Warlock. You know, and he Lance is still doing his music for his. For the little independent films and he could use some work right now if you know anybody uh and billy's retired made him made him a lot of money he and his wife and they retired they just moved from telluride colorado up to montrose mm -hmm. 
Well, they're doing well. Wow. Now, I, what was I into before we got off into, into the warlock thing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Turn that back, will you? <laughs> oh, I think we, we were talking about diamond. Uh, yeah, diamond. Di oh, yeah, yeah, we're talking about names. Oh, I was going to tell you about uh, Jesse Wayne. Uh -huh. Yeah, look up Dick Farnsworth or Richard Farnsworth. He, he goes by mm -hmm. uh, or did go by. He's passed away. He uh, had an accident with a pistol. It cancer too. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, where was I? <laughs> Jesse Wayne. Jesse Wayne. Oh, Jesse Wayne. Jesse Wayne. I get a call one day from Tom Joyner, the production manager at, well, at uh, Universal Studios, and he said, "Your name was given to me by Jesse Wayne." I said, "Oh, really?" He said, "Yeah." He said, "We called Jesse for the job, but he uh, said he was busy." Well, okay. He said, we want you to come in and, and uh, we want to we want to talk to you about doing something for us on, on a new movie we got going. Well, okay. So I went and met him. And it turns out that I met Steven Spielberg and the movie was Jaws. Wow. And I did ended up doing the cage thing in, in the movie Jaws. Three months something after the movie was finished, we did that down at the Esther Williams Tank and MGM Studios Lot 3. <clears throat> but Jesse is the guy that got me that job. Wow. And and I'm forever grateful to him yeah. for that because it's still Shark Week is a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> you so still get good. residuals for that? <laughs> and if you ever see this thing here, Jesse, I, I love you. Thank you very much for the job. He doesn't speak to me anymore, unfortunately, but yeah, oh my. yeah. I just recently got his address and phone number, so I'll just have to call him up and see how yeah. hard headed he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> let's just talk briefly because I'm sure I don't know. I want to talk about it. is Halloween two. How you how you ended up in the film? How how it was how, you know? Did you ever think after? <laughs> At the time, I'm, I'm I'm just curious of your personal feelings and thoughts on. At the time, did you realize the impact and and legacy and history that you that that was going to go down while you were doing it? How did you get that gig? What it was like doing it? Like all these years later, how you know how much people love it and impactful it was. I want to hear. It. I just give me the cliff notes. Give me give me all of it. I don't care. I want to hear it. <laughs> Or is this a question somebody asked, Sean? Did we get questions? He's from never people? been asked this. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're tired of hearing about it. I know, but you know what? People, you know, some people want to hear it from 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 you. You know. Well, you know what I tell people generally uh, uh, that want to do a phone interview or something. All you have to do is go to Google and Google my name, and you get a whole lot of information that you know yeah. that I've answered elsewhere. You get but, tired of talking about it. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> we don't have to talk about it. If try you repeating, about it. I mean, repeating your last uh, special effects job. over. Dude, I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sick of talking about Halloween. I was telling Sean just yesterday. I was on the phone with him. I was like, I, I'm so sick of talking about Halloween. I can't imagine how you how you feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> I never we don't have to talk about it. I never get sick of the people that ask. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's yeah. just, yeah. I really love the fans. I feel like I've got an extended family out there someplace. Yeah, so, yeah. And I meet them every now and then. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I I was fortunate because of Kurt Russell to meet mm -hmm. Deborah and John on right. Escape from New York. Yeah. When we finished that show, it was within a matter of weeks. It seems like I get a call from from Deborah. And she said, we want to talk to you uh, about a new movie we're doing uh, and uh, uh, coordinating it. I said, fine. She said, you have to come in. I'd like to sit down and talk to you. So I went in and I sat down and met with her. And she said, it's it's called Halloween 2. Have you seen the original Halloween? And I said, no, I can't say that I have. I've never been a horror fan except for Frankenstein, Dracula, you know, the the old 
I'm old, folks. What can I tell you? Hey, those are my favorite, too, the Universal, the Universal Monsters. Yeah, yeah. 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 And my favorite of all of them is the creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah. I don't know whether he's still here or not. Yeah, I see yeah, him back there. His head over there, a T-shirt signed by Rico and, and Ben Chapman. <laughs> and, you know, anyway, uh, they had me in, and, and she she explained that it was this guy that wears a mask and so on, and, and, uh, and I'm... I said, yeah, I'd, I'd take the job as a coordinator. And she said, you, you have to go down the hall and meet the director. So there's this long hallway. So I walk down and I pass a couple of offices and, and they're empty. And I, in the third one on a desk was this mask that she'd been talking about was laying on this desk. And I'm about, uh, I don't know, eight feet from the, the director's door. So I thought, hmm. So I put the mask on and I walked to his door and I stopped and stood there, looked at it. And he said, uh, yeah, who are you? <laughs> and I didn't answer. I just looked at him. He said, who the hell are you? So I started laughing. I took the mask off and I went and introduced myself and we had our meeting. And he said, yeah. You know. So I got up and I said, well, we'll see you on the set or whatever I said. And I started walking away and I, I stopped and I looked at it and I turned around Put the mask, turned around, looked at him and said, is there any reason I can't do this, play this guy? And he kind of looked me up and down and he said, I don't care if Deborah doesn't. But she's got the last word, you know, she's the producer. So I walked back up to her office and I said, he doesn't care if I play this character if you don't. She said, I don't care. She said, we're never going <laughs> to do another one of these anyway with this character. No, that was after, when I asked her about the, the mask and that cover all and all that stuff she said that we're never going to do another movie with this guy yeah so she said yeah yeah it's okay with me awesome now, so that's you, how i got the job did you ever it, ask it, it was up here and i was down here so i went out and bought the boots myself i bought the coveralls myself and put an, an insole that was in the heel was about that big and then it just went down to the ball of your foot you know they use them in the book business all the time for yeah. Mickey Rooney and you know Bogart and Alan Ladd and Kane Hodder. Hmm? And Kane Hodder. Kane, Kane, Kane is so obvious with the six inches or whatever he's got. <laughs> God love it. Anyway, but that's uh that's how I got it. That's how wow. I got that job. Amazing. Now, did they ever did you ever ask why isn't the, the other guy that played him last time gonna play him again? Did you ever ask? No, no, because I, I don't know. I just you didn't see it. You didn't think about it, right? <laughs> no, I didn't. no. Yeah. Did uh, you do the burn? Yes, sir. Twice. Wow. Yeah, that's what I do for a living. I don't talk. Right. right. I mean, I do occasionally. <laughs> right. You know, but I, I have such terrible straight, uh, stage fright. It started uh -huh. back at that Corganville that movie rants I was telling you about. Right. I was in the sheriff's office, which was their green room, and I was singing this this Elvis song, this Hound Dog, and the, the guy that runs the show, he said, uh, I'd like you to do that at the halftime show. That would be, uh, Halfway through the day, they had a show with a band and so on. Uh, and, and I said, no, 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 no. I said, I, I sing with records, but I don't really do, I don't, I've never been with a band or anything. So he made me get up on stage. He, he brought his guitar out and played a little bit and had me sing with it. He said, yep, yeah, you can do this. So he had me get up on the stage and and uh, I got out of meter with the band and, you know, because I'd never sung with the band. <laughs> wow. And so I got sick and vomited out back and <laughs> I've had stage fright ever since. I, I can't, I just lock up. Right. I can do a line or two. I'm okay with that. Yeah. But when well, it's remembering extended stuff, oof, well, yeah. so let me ask, what do you what do you think of this Nick Castle guy anyway? I don't. <laughs> where where was he? He's supposed to be here, isn't he? That looks isn't like he? him right there. That I looks know. like the guy. That looks I a lot it. like him. Kind of yeah. looks like him. I wish he's a little stiff up. though. Yeah. No, I, the first time I met Nick was uh, he came to visit Tommy Lee. At one of the shows, and he was sitting kind of with it, he had, he had his cap on it. I remember glasses, I think. And he, <laughs> he's sitting back with his sort of, and he shows just showed up live, didn't he? Now, 
Yes, he did. There he is. <laughs> he is, you sneaky little butter. Anyway, <laughs> he ended up going over. He was trying to hide happy 50th. I love it. I love it. Hello, Nick. Hey, Nick. But he was sitting with his back to everybody, and somebody said, Nick Castle over there. I said, I've never met him. And I walked over and said, I want you to do me a favor. If you would, I want you to sign my poster. And he said, of course I will. And we went over to the room and he put a signature, just as plain, just, a, and I know you have a thing with your signature on some of your posters way back when, uh, Sean. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, he was kind enough. But as far as talking to Nick, I, we just, it's say hello. That's it. We've never had a conversation. <laughs> I never liked Dick. That's why, because <laughs> no, you're not the first one. <laughs> no, I, I remember Dick from way back and uh, uh, doing the carpenter pictures too. the other ones. Yeah, yeah, I remember you in the band from but he, somebody had to tell me that you were there because I, I saw you from a distance down on the stage playing. I got to keep my hands out of the camera. But uh, oh, you mean on Escape from New York? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you were all sitting down there, you and and Dean, I think, was in that group, and John, and I don't know who all was there? But yeah, that was fun. Tommy Lee was probably there, wasn't he? Uh, I don't know. That's don't a good question. Tom Tommy wasn't on Escape, was he? No. I'm gonna move back a little bit. Hi, Nick. Look at who's there. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. You're home. I'm home. Oh my God! I think did uh, did uh, David fire you or what? I got fired. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, David Gordon Green and I came to came to blows. We 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 <laughs> fist the cuffs. Uh, he kicked my ass. Yeah, he's yeah. scrappy little fucker. That guy. Yeah, he's uh, little, but he's you know he's he's evil. He is. He's like a badger. He'll just jump up in you and eat his way out. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, no, uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm home just on a, a small hiatus. I go back in a couple weeks uh, and we're going to finish finish the show. So, yeah, but it's good to see you. And, and you know, Sean and I can take off while you two guys just talk it out for a while. <laughs> if you want. <laughs> hey, so Dick, Dick, what are you up to? You Are you retired like me? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I've been retired since '94. Oh well, there you go. That's yeah. that's a solid. Uh, yeah, that's a solid I, amount I, of years. I did do a few things. The last thing I did professionally was was uh, dang it. <laughs> I remember dang it. That was this, is, this is going good away. <clears throat> I can never remember the movie. <laughs> One day, no. Oh. Uh, I am everybody yelling, like, got drunk, and then and she, you know, did weird stuff. Anyway, that was in 02, but I did a, a little independent non union thing for a guy that, that he asked me, one of the fans that you know, oh, that's a little part for him. So I did, but uh, no, I just kind of I, I tell you, most of my time right now, I'm I don't know, you guys know about PlayStation or Xbox? Yeah, well, I do Red Dead Redemption. And flight simulator, I got my yoke and pedals and, you know, the whole thing. So you sit there and play video games? Absolutely. <laughs> like, John like John Carpenter. Like John. You remember the boombox boy, Nick? Was the, what? Yeah, the kid that had the radio and the cowboy hat and bumps into Myers in, 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 in part two. That was my yeah. youngest boy. And uh, so we play. He lives in Washington State, so we play online. Oh, that's fun! Yeah, wow. yeah. Well, I I just I I just played with my son, but I played with him and his family going to New York. We all went on a vacation. We did. How's New York? Wow, New York was not bad. You know, it, I thought it was going to be freezing. I brought you know the giant uh, overcoat with a thing that you can go to not mi minus a hundred degrees. Yeah. Didn't need it, but um, yeah, yeah, it was fun. You know, I was really introducing my grandchildren to the city so that we went to all the familiar places, except for Empire State Building. My son was too chicken. Wow. How old were you there for New Year's? 
Yes, we were there for you. I don't know why we did this. It was crazy. I was just thinking, why did you do that? <laughs> I've done that once and I'll never do it again. <laughs> well, we didn't we didn't go to Times Square. We were smart enough not to do that. But okay. we, had, we had family there that we uh, celebrated with. That was fun. Okay, nice. Yeah. The next thing you do is take him in the arch in St. Louis. Oh, yeah, the arch. Yeah. Oh, That's Nick, right. was it 28 Days? Was that the movie? 28 Days. That was it. That was it. Oh, Andrew days. Bullock. Yeah, we shot that in uh, Black Blackwater or Black Hill or something over in, uh, uh -huh. near Asheville, uh, North Carolina. That's the one where she's in rehab, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh. yeah, she puts she puts her baby here. I don't know whether it was a boy or a girl. She turned her coffee table upside down, put the child in there, push it down a snow, you know, a snowy driveway. And I'm coming by and it's a near miss with the child. That was my day in you know in that show. Remember, Nick, I mean uh, uh Chris, I was telling you you get a lot of one day jobs. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, was yeah, the yeah. Moment sure. one day jobs. Yeah. So I have to ask you this, Dick. You, you probably have no memory of it. Maybe you do, but it was something I saw in your credits. It's one of my all time favorite shows as a kid. You're credited as having done having done stunts on HR Puff and stuff. Yes, I did. I played a tree. Actually. A tree? <laughs> yes. yes. And, and that was a result of Jesse Wayne. He ra he used to run Puff and stuff and did double somebody on there. But he and I did a fight as trees. Yes. I've done it all, you know. Wow. <laughs> and that was on the series, not the movie, right? Yeah, right. Right. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Amazing. I know a tree from HR Puff and stuff. <laughs> you dug that up. Ooh. <laughs> this is our 50th show, Nick and Dick. Do you believe this? It's great. How did it last so long? Happy fit. Look at that. Happy yeah. fit. That's cool. <laughs> Just, this, got, this is in real gold, you guys. Like, <laughs> is that left over from your birthday recently? <laughs> you just had a happy. Uh, that would have been too long. You, wish. <laughs> you know, another thing I forgot to mention, Sean. Yeah. I was talking about the, the tabletop book and the whatever. <laughs> happy yeah sorry yeah uh, oh, actually yeah. nick nick got me a six pack of these on my 50th birthday so i thought i'd show it now nice. so anyway, yeah, nice. you're 50 anyway, i'm 52 but anyway go ahead dick tell your story i know it's just short uh the addition to that is that now i'm going to do a podcast wow what i was going to mm -hmm. do I don't know how long they want to do it, how often I mean, mm. is interview stunt guys. That'd be cool. And, yeah. Yeah. Have a yeah. different one on every episode and have them yeah. show pictures and talk about the things that they're doing and what you know, how they got in the business and yeah. so on. I no, think I that's would, a great idea. I yeah. why not? I mean, yeah. absolutely. I, I think yeah. maybe I, I could get some of the kids from from the shows, the movies, the, the Halloween series. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, that's I mean, easy. Somebody has got some contacts. I could probably talk them into giving me a couple. You, you can get everybody. Those. Stunt guys love to talk about themselves. I think, I think Sean <laughs> would give me a, a few names. <laughs> I can hook you. I can hook you up with some stuff. Oh, you can get Jeff Amata on. What what happened to I Jeff? Can get Jeff Amata Greg Nicotero. I can get you. I, uh, too bad I can't get. Uh, my buddy, his name escapes me right now. Can you believe that? <laughs> Stan Winston's name slips my mind. And well, he's dead. Yeah. I, I worked with, with Stan from his first day in the business. Yeah. Wow. Almost, I mean, he when he was taught by the guy that taught him at Disney, a lot of stuff that he knew, he used to come on the set disguised as Every movie, he was a different character. He'd come on the set at least once on every movie that we were on over there as a different character. And counted, wow. oh, my wife and my, my ex-wife and I went to his house once. So we went there more than once. But I mean, this one particular night, he was sculpting the uh, th the gargoyles for that movie that, that I think he won an Emmy or was nominated for an Emmy for that. Was he showing? For, for, for Gargoyles, the Bernie yeah. Casey one? Yeah, yeah. And my wife and I, at the time, we grabbed some clay and we started working on baby gargoyles that, that I think they eventually used in the movie. 
But mm. uh, Stan could sing. He loved to come to the house and do karaoke, the Beatles, and all that kind of stuff. Wow. Good guy. Yeah. Good guy. Yeah. Wait, Chris, let me see that shirt. Huh? Oh, yeah. Is there a reason I don't have that I yet? Just... What is I'm the only that? one that has it. <laughs> okay. No, what does that say? Uh, it says exorcist, and what's it say? Exorcist. The other. This this is the exorcist uh, backwards joined together on itself. Oh, okay, okay, I see. So it looked right. it looks like some crazy weird ancient writing, but all it is is the exorcist. I took it, flipped it, and put them overlapped it onto each other, and it makes all these symbols, which mm -hmm. is really cool. But uh, this is the this is my makeup effects crew T shirt. Ah, uh, for for oh, yeah. for the movie, and um, nobody has one yet. I have hundreds of them sitting in a box, waiting to give them out. So <laughs> <laughs> I haven't given. <laughs> <laughs> so I will we'll be giving to cut that out now, Dick. People are gonna be showing yeah. up at your house. <laughs> uh -oh. but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you guys no. want one if you guys want one i'll give you one and that's a hell of a shirt you're wearing there nick oh it's my hell one. of a shirt another yeah, one this, of uh, chris's shirts this is the one from the yeah the last it's like uh, mine. <laughs> it ended it it turns out huh? yeah what have you been up to nick well like i Besides said new york. I, I did go to new york uh with a family another uh, uh this was another sean clark sponsored trip from all the lovely oh. fans that come and greet me at the uh, convention so uh, <laughs> with that with that treasure I, I i i i take the whole family and uh and do all these uh fun uh, activities so uh I yeah, so, you know, <laughs> went to the went to the natural history history museum where i did send I'll, I'll i sent i don't know if i sent you guys this but there was a mask in the natural history museum from from centuries ago that looked like michael myers wow. i thought this was the origin mask so, <laughs> so i guess it's not uh william shatner after all <laughs> i didn't see that you i'll didn't send, send that, that to you i'll send that i would love to see it. yeah yeah um what else have i been doing you know it's been uh it's been uh one of those home uh christmas uh with you know the tinsel and the this and the that and the eating mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. uh, now uh when did you um wh what is i just want to know now you've done 50 of these right we know that we've seen yeah. all those yeah what is the projection for the next 50 do we have a new theme have you thought through are we going to just keep plowing through is yeah. there like a, there's no there's no new theme it's, no just, new theme. it's <laughs> just two guys getting older and and complaining about stuff and <laughs> bitching more about stuff i would like to change it up and do something new and, yeah, and lose our, about, our established audience <laughs> play play with play with stuff you know not like, not get rid of what we do but add some new new exciting things puppets. to keep people interested how about you know? this one get puppets. get on my lawn Oh, get on my lawn. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, we have a get off my lawn segment, Dick, where we complain about things that bother us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call oh. it sleep on my lawn. Yeah. Sean, have you mentioned yet on the program uh, your adventures in, in the air coming back from my from Florida? Yeah, I he's going to do his own show about that. I'm going to do my own standalone get off my lawn segment. Yeah. Yeah, is it, is it recently the Christmas uh, trip or the, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Uh, the short version is we got stuck in Houston for four days on the way back from Florida. You could have walked to California in four days, <laughs> yeah. I could have drove if we yeah, could have rented, rented a car, car and drove home. <laughs> no cars available, really. No so you, trains you available, full, no flights you available. You had a full on planes, trains, and automobiles. Nick, how are those masks holding up behind well, you? Take I don't care know if you could if the folks can see there but we got see. the three masks from the last three halloweens all produced by mr christopher nelson this one here is from 2018 this is kills this guy needs a a, a glass thing yeah 
for, for him so he doesn't rot away. He always already looks like he's rotted away, so it's hard to tell <laughs> when that will be rotted away. And, wow. uh, so can I buy it from you? Yeah, you can have these. Go ahead. <laughs> Come on up. So, uh, yeah, I wore this one. I wore that one, and I didn't wear this one. <laughs> I played another character. I hope everyone saw my fantastic performance it was fantastic it was amazing yeah uh, should win a bafta the flasher i was the did you see the the late the new ones dick no i haven't wow okay you you know you know he, hasn't even, he hasn't even seen the original <laughs> <laughs> he just saw two. Oh, you know you know there were three that i had to watch it she said i suggest that you watch this before because i had i hadn't seen the original and I didn't see, I didn't even know what was going on until Don Shanks and I were working on Married with Children. And he says, so you're Dick Warlock. And he said, how come you don't do conventions with us? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. Because I had never met Nick. I mean, uh, uh, what's his name? Don Shanks. Uh, before. And he said, yeah, we go to the conventions and meet the fans and you know, autograph thing. I said, well, I don't, I don't know about that. He said, you ought to consider it. I said, yeah, yeah, sure. So a year later, uh, I got a call from Tony, Tony, uh, somebody from Fangoria Magazine. Tim Pong. Tim Pong. Huh? Tony Tim, Tim Pong. Pong. Yeah. Right. He said, uh, Dick Warlock. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, he said, listen, would you be interested in doing a show we're doing down in uh, Los Angeles? And I said, yeah, what is it? He said, it's a convention. We've done. He gave me the, the details. And I said, yeah, OK. He gave me the date. I went. I hauled him the, my dummy with with my the coveralls. I took the, the knife, the scalpel, the boots, the mask. I never did it one time again. It was, I mean, they were all, fans were all over that stuff. I had no idea. And and I didn't, I had no idea about all that fan stuff for, for years. And I don't remember going and doing another one anytime soon after that. So it's just grown, you know, I, I, I have not seen, they were doing, they, part five had already finished. So years later, I sat down and watched all of them up to six, I think. And I haven't, I haven't seen any since then. I'm not a horror fan, Nick. I, I have a question for you, too. What is the one thing when you're at a convention that fan? what is the, what, if you could tell fans out there one thing not to do when they come meet you <laughs> at a convention? What I can would it be. I can answer that. What what, what should they not do? When let me answer. Let me answer that for them. Then they can say their answer. Don't come up and say, <laughs> "I just wanted to say hi." <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> I got your autograph before, but I just started. Yeah, or I, I really to wanted to buy that. something, but I spent all my money on everybody else. Uh, so I just yeah. want to say hi. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, go no, ahead. I, I don't. I don't feel that way. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> got you. Ain't got to, you. Ain't saying anything. They're not. You saying know, nothing. I, I figure those people pay money to get in there, to travel there. To and now, you want this exorbitant amount of money from from you know, or I'm wanting that from you. Uh, I just appreciate that that they come and and say hello. I really do. And, and Sean, you know that. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm just teasing. It. I just Fans find it funny that the ones They're not that a come. Movie. I was just going to say, yeah, the ones yeah. that come up and don't actually buy something, that come up and say, I just want to say hi, then yeah. they start asking the questions. They they <laughs> tend to talk longer than the people that buy something. Yes, that that's the one I think I can say bothers me because they paid and, and they're going to buy something. And, but yeah. Well, Take your time. You paid your ticket to get in here. You might as well just have a good time on answering <laughs> your questions. You know. I can't think of really anything from my from a point of view that really bugs me. I mean, there's repetitive questions, but that 
those are the yeah and but yeah. guess what all those people are individuals right. <laughs> they, yeah, didn't, yeah. They, are. they didn't hear the same question over and over again no. but right. you but, know like yeah. the, the main one is is you really scared me when i was a kid yeah, <laughs> yeah. and i always apologize i didn't mean to <laughs> it was john carpenter's fault that's yeah. what i said <laughs> well the fun the funny part of that is you could be like tommy lee wallace and you could have the the answers written out. He actually makes <laughs> Tommy Lee Wallace makes these cards where he writes out the answers to the most asked questions. There's like three of them. One of them is how was the Myers mask made? And he just goes like this. And he points down <laughs> at it. <and> they look because <laughs> he's so tired of of saying it. He has it, writ it written out. Well, I That's have what is your favorite kill? What's it like with meeting Donald Pleasance? Yeah, uh, working with Donald Pleasance and Jamie Lee Curtis. That's that's what was it like working with those people? You got to you got to uh, really seems like you really got to uh, hang with uh, Donald Pleasance a little more than I did. Did did you have? Well, I initially met him met him on on Escape. Oh, oh right. You know. Oh, that's uh, right. Escape. I didn't spend as much time then as I did in the second one. Yeah. 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 He he's cool. I I liked him. He was he's what I would like to have been an actor who really knew the lines, knew knew the whole script, and and could do it like he did it. He was always ready. You know, the only guy that I've ever worked with was was like that was Glenn Ford. He said to this poor individual who was a stand-in at Disney who had an opportunity to do a scene with Glenn Ford. The, the scene to put your hand on the Bible, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing, nothing but the truth to help you God? And, and boy, he was thrilled. And the director handed him another piece of paper with new lines on it. He changed that little saying to say something else. And I can't remember exactly what it was. And he blew the lines twice. This guy was shaking. You could see him shake. And, and uh, Glenn said, listen, when you learn to do the lines, I'll come back or something like that. And he stormed off the set. You know, he just he would not tolerate unpre unprofessional people. He didn't know the story about this guy. It had been a stand-in for Peter Ustinov in the whole movie or whatever. No, Peter wasn't in that with somebody else. Well, anyway, Jan Williams went on to be a producer at Disney Studios. So he he, he kind of blew Glenn off. <laughs> well, Nick, you, you did that to Jim Court, James Courtney, right? Like you were on set and you were like, until you figure out how to do this right, I'm yeah. leaving. And he forgot then, all his lines. He forgot all his lines, and Nick just walked off. James Jude Courtney. <laughs> James Jude Courtney, the new, the new shape. I don't. Have you ever met uh, Jim? I did, and I love him. He's, he's, a, he's a great guy. He's a class. He, he really can't remember a line. Did it's not amazing. deliver a single line in all three of those films. That's how bad he was. Yeah, that's well, right. I didn't know Myers talked. No, he, he doesn't. We're just joking. <laughs> Okay, wait a minute. I have a very sensitive. You got me. <laughs> I have a, I have a very sensitive and provocative question to ask Dick. Oh, are you ready? I can't okay. wait. Back in 1978, I wore a mask. <laughs> it was the original mask. There were three of them, but there, I had the original mask. After the movie, I had it up on my piano, on a styrofoam thingamajig for for a couple of years, I think. And everyone, you know, it was Halloween. So it was a hit, but it wasn't the gigantic, uh, iconic thing that it is now. Right. But nevertheless, I get a call from Deborah Hill for the second one that Dick, you started. Yeah. And she says, Nick, we're having a problem getting the mask right again. Do you have it? Because we can't find the other ones. And I said, yeah, I have it. She said, can I borrow it? She said, can I borrow it? And I said, sure. And so there went the mask and never to be brought back to my home. And I thought, maybe Dick has my mask. And then I thought, if Dick had my mask, I would trade him all these masks to get my mask. Why didn't, why didn't you ask? I mean, you knew John. You, I mean, you went to school with the guy. Why didn't you tell him you wanted he, it? He probably has it in his closet. Certainly giving it to you. He probably hey, who has? Closet. Well, who ended up with that mask? Me. Okay, <laughs> then what did you do with it? It is you. I, I had the coveralls. I had the whole Megillah. So then, what did you do with it? Oh, 
<laughs> it's gone. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> You're <We're> breaking up. <laughs> it I'll tell, me you, $1 I'll tell you what I did with I tell you what I did with the Jason mask, the Jason from part three, four, and five. Nobody cares about that. <laughs> I'm, kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It was given to me at the end of five. I said, "Can I? Can I?" Can I the guy takes it down. He said, "Hey, it's yours." I sold it. I'm, I can't do this now because it's, this is going to be national stuff and nobody knows how much I got for it. So we have to tell Sean to cut it out. I can cut it. I can. I'll cut out the amount part. Yeah, go ahead. The one from three, four and five. Three, four and five. Wow. wow. I hate to break it. I hate to break it to you, Dick. You know what you could sell that mask for today? It went for a guy came up to me at one of the last shows I just yeah. did. He said, I know what you sold that for. He said, and I just paid. <laughs> Nick, I wish I'd have known that, man. I would have given it to you. I had no idea that it had any value. I didn't know for years that it had value. Nick, I appreciate the fact that you would so flippantly be willing to give away my mask. <laughs> <laughs> just, just could have these. <laughs> I just, I wish, I wish I knew what happened to the other two. You a lot of value back there, buddy. Yeah. I want to know what well, happened yeah. to the other two. Cause there was, there was yeah. three masks. What happened to the other what two? What happened to the other two? That's, that's one what I burn. want. What um, the one that burned? No, that was a different one. That was one that Dom Post did Don for Post. the movie. Yeah. What was the one that the the fabled one that that sat under Deborah Hill's bed? That's getting... the one I got. That's the that's one. That's what she, she said. said. That's yeah. Where... yeah. That's the but but that's the one <laughs> Nick had. That makes no sense because yeah. Nick had the mask. Nick gave it to Deborah. Deborah used it on Halloween too. You ended up with it on Halloween too. What was the one that was under her bed getting cigarette smoke on it? That was it. I that, I think that's I think that's the mask she got from Nick. And it, it, it was it was it was dirtier. Uh, yeah, they went all through that when talking about that how it <laughs> changed over years because she was a heavy smoker. But mm. that was that was a story I was. I don't getting. know. I think something's missing there in this yeah. timeline. I think something's missing. Yeah. <laughs> there were definitely three because you could see the three on us when we did the uh, the rap party thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's here, right. Hey, I did see three in that photograph. Yeah, it's a yeah. it's a classic photo. Here, yeah. wait a minute. I'll show it to the fans who haven't seen this before. There yeah, you go. yeah, I've got a photo of that. Yep. <laughs> oh have, well, I just got that photo a couple of years ago, though. I I just got a hold of it or whatever. So, well, other than you guilting Dick for selling the mask, uh, what else has been going on? <laughs> <laughs> do we have questions? Did people? Did you put? No, I didn't do that. I decided to just. Uh, I did just to go ahead and just have. You know, I figured you would have enough questions, Chris. Well, I mean, I could you talk had a about a lot of questions, Chris. Yeah, uh, yeah I can talk you about did, this. You shit still didn't me. finish your, your questioning about two. Two. <laughs> I guess, yeah, but I know I can sit here and talk to you guys all day about this shit of like, you know, well, and actually, how many times he interviewed you two yeah, and fucking how many times you... Nick, yeah, but I still like haven't fifty times. Yeah. Yeah, but I can still sit down with Nick and talk to him. That's true. Well, sure. And and you as well. And we could do show after show. This, to me, I could sit there and talk about all the, go through the resumes and talk about all these little things, you know. <laughs> well, back Which real is, quick, back to Halloween 2, and you were talking about Donald <clears throat> Pleasance. I was just curious, what was his demeanor like on set? Did he seem like he wanted to make that film, or did he, what was his, what was, was he his, phoning it in? was he <laughs> phoning <laughs> for, Don, for Donald Pleasance? Yeah, in part two. Oh, uh, all I can tell you is he was the consummate professional, always ready to go, but he always kind of went back to his dressing trailer. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like he, he didn't sit on the set and make small talk. Mm -hmm. Be that way with you, Nick? 
Yeah, yeah and, you know, it turns out that we weren't in very many scenes together. So uh, apart from uh, apart from just hanging on the set, yeah, I think at that time he was kind of embarrassed to be on the show. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, he's still embarrassed on part two because he, like I say, he he didn't hang out and just chit chat even between yeah. setups. Right. Yeah. Go. I I didn't know. You know, I I always liked his stuff. I, it was a, it was a treat working with the Donald Pleasance. You know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Which, I uh, between that one and part three, which one did you enjoy working on the most? I would say for different reasons, they were they they're both equal. They they're different shows altogether, but, but mm. even in substance. But uh, I'd say they were they were a trip for me. Just I didn't realize that I was working with two first time kind of directors. With Rosenthal you know, and Tommy with the Wallace, yeah. I had no idea that they were their their first uh, first jobs. I that wonder, Rick, if I, Rick's uh, first wonder why uh, Chris. I mean, uh, Rick never gave me any direction. It was other than go from here to there, but <laughs> don't do this. Don't walk faster. Don't you know? And then for no, I won't even go there. But anyway. <laughs> um, well, he, he so used something Debbie Deborah said, and, and she ain't here to defend it, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> it Rick, wasn't bad, you know. Rick had the same technique as John did then. Yeah. That was <laughs> <laughs> you know John, you're, I'm gonna. We should start a separate yeah. show called "Don't Go There," and it's just <laughs> stories that you're not supposed to tell. <laughs> so the whole world can watch the podcast and. Uh, no, it anyway. Yeah, yeah th that was uh, Rick's first directing gig. He had produced a few films. He produced a. You're gonna like this, Nick, since you know you did Skate Town USA. He had just produced a film called Skateboard Madness. Oh. <laughs> I love that. That's the first time I've ever heard that. Yeah, but then and his then second I film, I I think his second film is his best movie was Bad Boys with Sean Penn. That was. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That was a good movie. That was that was really a an upshot for him. Yeah. Yeah. That's so Halloween movie. two paid off for him. Well, he wanted me to follow him. He wanted me to, to coordinate his films, but again, I was working on something I, that might have been uh that might have might have been the second one of the the the, the thing. And and so I turned it over to Chuck Waters, and then he he kept using Chuck for his whatever movies he did after that. I don't know how many he's done since then. Mm -hmm. I've only I'm, talked to him, I think once. I talked to him on the phone a couple of times, but I only saw him face to face with with his uh, his lady one time. I'm, I'm curious if you guys watch a lot of movies now, and if so, have you seen anything lately that you you feel is you know. Is a is a good movie. Doesn't have to be horror. I know you're not, not to be horror. horror. I know be neither anything. of you are big horror fans. So yeah, it can be anything. I'm just curious if you watch a lot of movies and if so, Chris, have you, you seen gotta, anything you gotta, lately? You're learning a little bit about me. I mean, I, I I don't come out a whole lot. I'm not a movie fan. Hmm. I watch YouTube. I love huh. YouTube. All you and can play video games YouTube about everything, <laughs> but. I, I was not a horror fan. They told them earlier, but uh, I don't like most of the stuff that's coming out. The CG crap is crap, uh, <laughs> you know, in my opinion. Yeah. It's just, it takes reality and just takes it and throws it away. And it's all, uh, it's it's uh, overblown cartoons or something. Mm -hmm. I don't, I just, I don't like half the actors that are out there today. Hmm. They're, they're not. I don't think half of them are actors. Not, <laughs> but, well, not like I'm used to in the old days. Yeah. I mean, the guys that had two lines in a movie could have been stars. They they did, you know. They say there's there's no small parts. There's only small actors, and 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 uh, the actors today, uh, I don't know. I just they don't grab me at all. They're None soft. Do you remember the last? What's the last movie you saw that you liked? Do you remember? Last movie I liked. So you don't go to the theater? 
No, very seldom. I'm trying to remember the last movie that I went to. Oh, it was actually the last movie I went to was actually a movie that they some some friends took me to and it was to see Jaws 3D. <laughs> Jaws 3D in the 70s. Or <laughs> Jaws 3D. The 80s. 80s. Yeah. So 40 wow. years ago, you saw a movie. <laughs> well, now, well, now it all makes sense. Now I know why you never went to another movie again. But, you know. <laughs> the last movie I saw was Jaws 3D. I'd give up, too. <laughs> oh, what about you, Nick? Well, seen Thank anything God. lately you like? Uh, well, uh, let's see. My wife and I, uh, through Chromecast and the Academy, watched about 45 foreign films for uh, uh, for the potential for being Academy Award consideration. So uh -huh. we stuck here at the, the at the home base watching a lot of movies. Yeah. There were some good ones. And, us and as usual, there's a lot of clunkers. Mm -hmm. uh, but I liked the uh, Inarutu Inner movie, the bot, uh, what is it called? Bando Bando? Oh, it's his. It's a Mexican movie uh, about. It's kind of like a, a, a his version of Eight and a Half, uh, okay. the Fulani movie. Very surreal movie. Really good. Why well, I can't remember the exact title. Bondo Bando something like that. Uh, that was very good. And then there was another one from Australia that was a, as a horror film actually about uh, a witch in Mo um, uh, Montenegro, I think. Uh, again, I'm forgetting the title, but a very good one. Um, other than that, I watched uh, this thing called Halloween Ends on the plane. Ooh. <laughs> and, you I, know, Elvis. It, Elvis, that yeah. was the last movie that I went to see. I, oh. <laughs> Which one? Oh. Yeah. What did you see? Elvis. 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 The yeah, new the one. Recent, the new one. Yeah. Okay. That guy did a good job, I thought. I yes, mean, he did. Actor. Yeah. I thought Kurt, see, Kurt, when he did Elvis, if you remember the Dick Clark version. Sure. Um, I thought he was he was the best. He called me, he called me about three nights after they showed the movie. And he said, Well, I know you're a tremendously big Elvis fan. So what did you think? So I told him what I thought of his performance. Or uh, it's the best that I ever seen. I thought he he captured Elvis very well. Uh, but so did this fellow that that just did it. He, he I thought he did it too. He had uh, the nuances and stuff. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, that was my last movie. Unlike my compadre here, I, I actually have been getting into horror more because I've been going to these horror conventions, meeting some of the delightful uh, actors and actresses that have uh, uh, donned the, all these crazy masks and stuff like that. And then I get curious. I got to go see them. I never saw, for instance, Nightmare on Elm Street. I never saw Friday the 13th. Never saw any of these things until Sean made me go to these conventions. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then um, and then it's just been fun. So yeah, I've, I've been pretty getting kind of up to date on the latest ones. I have a big gap, you know. <laughs> Between yeah, right. uh, yeah. a few years ago and everything before, but uh, I'm starting to catch up a little bit. I saw Smile. I saw, you know, this uh, last little crop. Uh, I, you know, every, every, all of them are done pretty well, and uh, some of them are better than others. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's, it's there's a lot of talent going on in there. I think uh, in the horror in the horror genre in the horror genre. You know, on, yeah. uh, I'm looking forward to what is the new one? The robot one. Megan. Megan. Saw it last night. Well, you'll have to and? watch the beginning of this episode. I'm not going to talk about it again. <laughs> we haven't <laughs> talked about that. We have to get to that. <laughs> it's uh, it was um, it, it's worth seeing. I I I I I was hoping for more, but it, the but trailer it, seemed, Yeah, the, the trailer is really trailer. good. Yeah, yeah, they show all the yeah. good stuff in the trailer. Unfortunately, uh, okay. Uh, I'm not a fan. There you go. I want. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I watched an interesting movie last night. It was called The Menu. Oh, oh, I know that one. We just talked uh, about it. So we did. Yeah. I didn't see it when you asked me, but I saw yeah. it last night with what Ralph Fiennes. Tell me what that that was about, Chris. I, I think I saw that. It's a it's a new movie. Just came out 
just I don't know within the last couple, month like or six so. months so the last couple months yeah yeah, yeah a couple months um it's an interesting it's an interesting movie I have it's lots really, of thoughts on it actually it's very layered of course lots of social commentary a lot of satire a lot of you know uh uh you know political uh, commentary ish uh it's it's an interesting movie i i actually recommend it yeah I, nay, I, I, nay really liked it yeah it's yeah. i mean it's got issues but it's it's a it's not anything what i thought it was going to be same and and, yeah. and it's it's very uh I guess you could call it it's in the elevated horror category. I guess you could call it that, you know, um, uh, but uh, it, I, Nick, I think you would like it actually yeah. um, a lot. Um, you might like it too, Dick. It's, it's interesting movie, really well shot, really well acted uh, and interesting story, you know, but um, I, I'll go into that. Yeah, you can't really talk After. about what it's about without kind of giving it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah, yeah. You can't talk about it without spoiling it if you haven't yeah. seen it. So, um, and I watched a really great movie, oddly a screener that I got for the Academy. Nick, speaking of the Academy stuff, um, mm -hmm. I watched a great movie that you guys would all like. I think it's probably one of my favorites of the year. Last year was called Empire of Light. Ooh. Um and it's fantastic it's really it's not a horror film it's a it's a a period piece it takes place in the early 80s and in, in in the uk or is it oh. uk or is it ireland I, I anyway um and it takes place in a movie theater an old majestic movie theater it's a fantastic movie in the 80s really really great early it takes it, early 80s i believe oh. it takes place around the time where like um um Let me write that when down. ska came around and and the, and the all the you know the british the mods on the on the on the mopeds and stuff in the uk yeah. around that time it's really great it's really great i highly recommend it. empire of light and we just lost uh terry what's his name from the specials and fun mm -hmm. boy three mm -hmm. he just passed away mm -hmm. what's his name terry he used to date jane weedland right yeah 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 terry hall Terry Hall. I saw a great documentary about Abbey Road Studios. It's called "If These Walls Could Sing." Ooh. It's uh, it's a, a really great documentary about the 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 beginnings, the history, and the and and the you know everything that has been recorded at Abbey Roads, which used to be EMI, I believe it was. Um, and uh, it's a great documentary. Talk to Paul. McC it's made by Paul McCartney's daughter. Hmm. Oh wow! Um, so it's so it's it's really good. Um, I highly recommend that. Um, one movie I did see during Christmas that I watched with my mother and Nay watched it and and my stepfather uh, and everybody loved it and everybody I've read online has said they loved it. And if any of you've seen uh, Violent Night yet, I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> did you like it? Uh, it was it was fun. It's fun. It, it was fun. It's, yeah, it's, it's fun. fun. It's not a. I mean, it's very entertaining. There's, it's it, yeah. It's 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 yeah, bad. Santa meets Die Hard, hard too. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> what it, exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. David Harbor playing a disgruntled Santa Claus who has to save a family who's being held hostage. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That's pretty good. Um. Well, I don't want to keep you guys. I know Dick's been on here for now, like an hour and a half. Um, and I appreciate both you guys dropping by for our 50th episode. I don't, is there anything you wanted, anything else before we call this, Chris, or any other questions? Or I have so many questions. We'll... we'll, we'll... <laughs> let's i i would i don't know let's all go let's go to dinner and drink some wine and yeah, <laughs> yeah. well i'm lo i'm local remember that's right I'm local well, well I, maybe I, when when dick comes to visit you said you might be coming you might be coming out to cali sometime right not not before the four the 45th convention and you say you might be making a trip me yeah uh no that's all <laughs> Or is that well? We're talking about one in 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 the spring. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe dinner in the spring if you if you're in town. 
well, if you, if that's an invite, I'll make sure I'm there. It's an invite. <laughs> you go. and Kat. Let's do it. <laughs> and, you know, I, I just so everyone knows that I'm starting my new podcast. It's called Mikey and Me. And it's <laughs> my ventriloquist act. Awesome. And it goes something like this. Mikey, what'd you do for Christmas? Really? Interesting. <laughs> something like that. That was just I'm working taste. this up. I'm working. That was this just up. a taste. That was a that was yeah. just a taste. It is yeah. going to be one of the great comedy acts of all time. It really is. What, what town do you live in, Nick? Are you are you in California? Tell him, Mikey. Crazy town. <laughs> no, it's in. La I'm in Los Angeles, okay. right here in the middle of Hollywood, um, <laughs> waiting actually to do more signings tomorrow. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. Tomorrow is it? How, tomorrow come you, how come you stayed away from them so long? I know you were so reluctant, from what I heard. Well, you know, I was hearing all these bad things about John Clark and you know his his management skills. No, um, I don't know. You know, it's a good question. I, I'll very briefly. I'll. Um, I was just didn't understand the allure of of, of meeting it. someone, meeting someone that was under a mask uh, that didn't have any talent other than to be told where to walk. <laughs> and so it, but, so I was, I was kind of thought I was saving everyone's money for them. <laughs> and then uh, John said, no, you got to go because, you know, uh, everyone wants to meet. You're the only one they haven't met yet. And they, it's kind of like, you know, stamp collecting, you know, you need it all is. the, the right thing. So I went, the first time and I had a great time and I saw that everyone kind of enjoyed it and was getting their money's worth, I suppose. And I, you know, then now I'm a fiend. I got to go to every one of them. <laughs> you go, oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you really go a lot? I, I did that last year. I don't know, Sean, what did we go to like 10 or 11 of these things? And, At you know, least. so it was almost yeah. like once a month. Yeah. It turned out. Yeah. No, I, I go. I, I, I never darling out last year for four, and I hadn't done anything since eighteen. Ah. Didn't, didn't plan on doing any more. Yeah, you know, he made me an offer that I just couldn't refuse. <laughs> I am, you know, and uh, and now I'm doing four more this year. Good for you. Oh, hopefully we'll hook up. Hopefully, and do more than well. This has been the most we've ever chatted. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm rather boring. I mean, you can tell that. What like, what movies do you like? I, 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 what about this? I, 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 you, yeah. I don't know. Well, that'll be good. Two boring guys having dinner together. That it may spark some genius. You don't know. It might. It might. We'll get. I'll tell you. Get uh, old uh, Freddy Krueger involved in it, and uh, oh, he wants you to do a lot of listening with him. I was going to say, you guys won't get a <laughs> word in if, if Robert's oh, there. He's, <laughs> right. He's a chatty, chatty guy, boy. Yeah, definitely. I sat between him and Kane Hodder one night at the bar, and it was like a tennis match. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, if, if you if you had some questions that more about H two that you wanted to talk about, if you want to hang here and talk about them, I'll hang with you. If you don't, that's cool. Oh, I, I'm I, I could go all day. You don't want me to do that. <laughs> I'm going to right after this. And it depends. He'll get the readout on the fans. Get that, keep that guy off of there. He's boring. No, not oh, at all. Just, no, <laughs> not at all. This is, it's been awesome to have both of you guys here. It's amazing. And well, I, I, again, I think not only to meet day. you, but to, to, to spend some time with the bearded wonder here. To, to I know, right? Guy from next year. Well, <laughs> now that, it's... now that I have both of you there, I are here, I can, I mean, I know I've asked these questions before, but some of our viewers might want to know just since we have both of you here were you uh nick you were never even asked to reprise the role in part two right they never even mentioned it to you which just I seems, don't remember just seems crazy to me that they wouldn't at least think Let, let's get the same guy when 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 was it shot you remember the year it was shot 80 80 80 well i was sp probably starting to shoot my my first movie so I, I was wouldn't have been available. Uh, prop I, I think I remember you saying. I think I remember you telling me a story. You were you were getting ready to shoot something, and you weren't even in that. You were doing your own thing. Yeah. Yeah. No. And for me, it was remember it was a lark. It was to be on set, and 
learn as much as I could from John's experience as a director so I could, you know, uh, pick up a few tips for my own director or yeah. tutorial read. So mm -hmm. I, I probably wouldn't have, John probably wouldn't have even have thought of it. And the only reason mm -hmm. he thought of me was that I came on the set right. while they were doing pre-production and he went, well, why don't you do this? <laughs> well, if you want to hang around and bother me <laughs> well it's kind of funny that the two most iconic michael myers of all time that are sitting right here neither of them were really it was never it was wasn't much thought being put into casting either of you you just kind of stumbled <laughs> into it nick dick just kind of said oh can i do this you know i mean the most iconic killer yeah. of all time is just like eh, yeah go ahead you do this yeah for both yeah. of the you. two best ones yeah. which over time it, it, you know that that role has been over every time it came up has been overthought and and everybody wants it and everybody's going for it. And these two guys, like you People said. People ask me about it. I say, it was a job to feed my family at the time. Yeah. So like I say, I didn't find out until part five was had already been shot that right. there was a fan base for this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, now you, Nick, when, when did you hear that part two was even being made? Was it, did you hear about it or did you just like, it was already done and you're like, oh, they did another one of those or how... Do you recall? <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, you know, I, I, I didn't see it at the time either. Uh, no, I, I think I was often into my own world there. When was Escape? Escape was before. Uh, it was before, because that's where I met John and Deborah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, so, so we when did we shoot Escape then? What year was that? That would have been I was on that. I, I co-wrote that with John, and so I was on the set a lot. Really? Legitimately, legitimately on the set. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, I was there. I went out to the New York shoot and I was, I didn't go to St. Louis, but I went to, uh, I was here all, for all the LA stuff. I wasn't in New York. I did the St. Louis and the, and the LA. Yeah. So we, we saw each other probably in LA. Well, where, where was the, uh, the band scene shot on the stage? It was in LA. That was, that was yeah. in St. Louis, wasn't it? In, no, that was the oh, Wilton. No. It was oh, the that Wilton. was a Wilton. That's right. It was yeah. a Wilton. But yes, yes. Down at Wilshire oh, wow. and Fairfax yeah. or something. Yeah. Down there somewhere. Yeah. Well, I never knew I never knew that was the Wilton. I was just at the mm -hmm. Wilton, like seeing Wait a this band uh, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I got the shirt at the Wilton. You do an entire other series of videos called Horrors Hollowed Ground. Well, I guess it's not a horror film. Well that's it, it 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 crosses over. Plus, I do Hollywood's ho hollowed grounds too. So yeah. actually, I've been thinking about doing Escape. That's why I asked when you brought it up. Yeah, but, yeah there's a lot of local stuff here to to, to yeah. check out for, for that movie. Um, yeah. So in other words, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, I had no. You know, I did that one. Then I went on that movie. Helped as a writer. Helped me get my first movie as a director. And so I went on and just no. I don't have any memory of of me being associated in any way whatsoever with Halloween 2, let, let alone being asked to, to play the character again. You know what I'd like to get before I die? I'd like to get a part in a movie, the, the whole movie. There are a lot of big actors, that's what they do today, with just a couple of lines here and a couple of lines there. Don't, don't give me paragraphs, because I'd be like, what's his name? And you know, Myers, the guy that played Myers, he did, said, didn't have a, a, a part, in a, I mean, a word in the whole thing. I, mean, that's <laughs> only because I, couldn't, I couldn't remember him. But uh, yeah, that's that's my, I think it's my, my next personal goal is to have a part in a movie. And I'll never get it in Tennessee, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. Yeah. Man, so I was just... I, I'm not surprised after all that's happened that I wasn't, a, you asked Nick about how, why they didn't think of him. I, I was invited to do part seven. Oh. Oh. You knew that, didn't you? It was the one Chris Duran did. Was that seven? Yeah. H2O, yeah. Part seven. Well, they, called, H2O. they called our house. I wasn't there. They talked to my wife. And and they said, do you think he'd be interested in, in reprising the role of uh, whatever? Is that the right word? Reprising? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, she said, well, he, he'll be back pretty soon. It's, I'm sure he'd be interested. 
So by the, I came back and she said, Oop, they called back and said that they've got too much time and film invested in the guy that's doing it right now. And the deal was they wanted the mask. See, uh, at that time I still had it. My mask. Uh, and, and you come in and do it, <laughs> but bring the mask with you. See, uh, uh, that's what it was all about. But anyway, I didn't, I didn't do it. They stuck with Chris because they, you know. Did you still have like the way the mask looked on him and the mask itself? They weren't happy with that. Did you still have Nick's mask at that time? Yeah. Hmm. Wait a minute. Oh, jeez. Still... What did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> Nick's mask. <laughs> what year was that? Don't say that too loud either. Well, they filmed <laughs> it in 98. Well, I was, that's why I was still in LA in 98. Yeah. I, we left in April of 98. Hmm. So I like how most of the show is us trying to figure out what year we did something. <laughs> <laughs> Half the thing is I did I am, you know. Ah, what year was the residual that? check uh, says so and so and I God. All right. But but that's how I that's how I remember years. Uh, you probably do this too, Dick, or anyone that or and Chris, you must do this all the time. Yeah, is that absolutely. you know you know the year from the movie. Yeah. In other absolutely. Words, oh, that was 85. I was in uh, Vancouver that year. I was doing yeah. fly, you know. Yeah. So, so you you remember it from the the project. Absolutely. I I'll remember uh, yeah. That's I remember what was I doing that year? Oh, that was that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. What's well, a, what's the what's the uh I got one question for Sean is that what is the um outlook for the uh, convention scene next year? We looking good. We looking bad. Is the the convention scene in general? Yeah, I mean, does oh. it seem like it's hot and heavy and going real good, like it did last year? Oh yeah, it is not slowing down. It is yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I mean, have I not sent you an updated list? I maybe I need to send you an updated list. Oh no, no, I, I, I have gotten you. You've kept me abreast, and oh, okay. and uh, hopefully they didn't sound like a complaint. No, I, no, no, Nick, no, Nick is no, 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 uh, uh, no. I just, I, I'm always curious because you know the the uh, temperature of the economy changes, mm, oh. is changing, and it's not getting any better. And I figure people's uh, interest in you know sending money are to two old men like us. Yeah. Is I, I not, don't understand the disposable, the disposable. The disposable the income. Yeah, yeah. Dis I'm always curious as to when this all falls apart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's been said for the last people, couple of years since COVID. People always have people always have money for happiness. I, yeah, you know I, what I mean, it, yeah, it. Um, and, I don't see it. I haven't seen it slowing down at all. Yeah, people have money for happiness if it brings them happiness, and those things bring you happy. You know, meeting you, going to those conventions, meeting Dick, meeting all those people, and and having fun and being in that community. People will spend the money even if they don't have it because it brings them happiness. And I think yeah. that's something that people have to remember, you know. About well, yeah, I stuff. started at $10. That was not, it wasn't too bad because everybody else, I think, was 15 <laughs> <laughs> Inflation. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the the thing I noticed, I went to a couple of Broadway shows and I went and, and I swear to God, I looked around at the audience and it was our audience. <laughs> It was, this, it seemed like, you know, as again, it was like a working class crowd, you know, yeah. having a great time. And they're spending gigantic amounts of money, not only to get to New York, obviously, for, yeah. for that holiday, mm -hmm. but, you know, the tickets to a Broadway show are insane. So I'm thinking, hey, you know, it's kind of a reasonable kick you get out of being coming to these shows and having fun at, at a horror convention. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 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 I wish I I wish I did more. Of them, like, you know? Honestly, I wish I could do more of them. No one, but like I said, no one cares about the makeup effects guy, man. There we go. There we go. Who cares? Feel sorry. They want to talk to everybody. Guys. Yeah. Or Chris. <laughs> I don't get to do conventions at school. I literally just told him yesterday I got him into one, and now he's complaining again. Got me into one. I have you and I have you signed up for <laughs> two this year. There you go. Two Halloween one too. You you doing oh, those shows? That counts. You doing shows? Who? Chris. Yeah. Me? 
Occasionally, I do one or two a, 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 a year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Mostly the Halloween thing, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do like one or two a year. They're fun. I like them. I wish, like I said, I wish I could do more, but, you know, it's either work or, uh, you know, they, they want the guy in the mask. <laughs> they don't want the mask guy. They don't want they the want mask the guy. The mask. They want the guy in the mask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there it's are a bunch of people that there are a bunch. There's a layer of the fans that really get into the technique of uh, makeup, makeup techniques, and things like that. that oh yeah, real. That's that's a real. That's a real. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. It's legit. Well, yeah, no, to there, meet there a lot of guys that, really that make them. masks. They make yeah. these masks. Yeah, I don't know whether you met any of them or not. But oh sure, out yeah. there making these things. Yeah, and they're selling for pretty good money. Yeah. Somebody sent me, Sean, was it you? Maybe not. Somebody sent me one recently. It was a screen grab of a mask being sold on eBay for like $1,500 or $2,500 saying that it was a Myers mask from Kills that Doug Tate wore. Oh, was it yeah. You sent that, man? I sent that to you. and But That's then right. if you read it a little closer, it really said that it was a mask that he autographed on the set of kills oh, so a fan oh. brought the mask and apparently he signed it while he was on set but the way oh, they worded God. it tried to make it sound like it was from the film yeah i don't remember that because that's impossible they couldn't have, that, that mask wasn't out yet mm. on that set and then i were both there the day that doug was there <laughs> and they even used the picture of him holding your mask that i took right. of him on set right it's weird anyway yeah yes we've met those Chris, people that's there. another mask mystery mm -hmm. mask you mysteries all, all over the place uh-huh there's there's, uh -huh. there's 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 one every time one of these movies comes out there's mask mysteries yeah yep there's another podcast mask mystery mm -hmm. mask mysteries mask mysteries well mask i mysteries. i i have a i have to go i have a, a jimmy okay. kimmel show i'm gonna do with mikey uh, with mikey okay <laughs> So well, hope all the fans tune in. Well, we are well, going to wrap you, it Nick. up. It's time to wrap, wrap it up. up. Uh oh, I think he's <laughs> yes. gonna grab something. Is he grabbing the? Well, where'd he go? Where'd he go? This was. I have a closet full of these. This is the latest one that I got. Mm -hmm. I gave, gave this to me. Uh, <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> he's like got a shimmer. chin that sticks a mile out there, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, that guy's got a chin on him. Yeah, he does. But that's it. I get them. I got probably 10 of these that have been given to me. Nice. I only want one of them. The what? <laughs> Who want one of them. I wish I could give it to you. He's willing to give away those <laughs> three you, behind you deserve him. It. <laughs> but then again, by not coming out and participating in the beginning, yep. maybe not so much, Nick. You blew it, Nick. You blew it. <laughs> Blow yeah, it. I did. I blew it. I hey, I'll give you this one if you want it. <laughs> there you go. That's a deal. Call it even. Hey, good yeah. deal. <laughs> it, it's great to see you, man. I finally get to to chat with the real guy. <laughs> Me too. You and real I love yeah. when you when I took. I don't know how you felt about that when I I took that from you. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't I, I don't remember. I don't know if you remember, but I sued you. No, I didn't. <laughs> did. Oh shit! And on that note, yeah. hey everybody, we go. thanks for being here. Happy fiftieth, man! Happy fiftieth, you guys! Thank Happy you guys. Happy. Thanks for Happy being here. Bye. Good Sean, luck on your Happy ventriloquist 50th. show. Thank you. Great meeting you. Hey guys, just want to jump in here real quick to remind you. Our shirt store is up online, tpublic.com backslash user backslash malfunction. Go there. We got a bunch of new thing with who. We got a bunch of. <clears throat> Come check it out. We got a bunch of thing with two head designs, all kinds of designs, more designs you know what to do with, Horror's Hollow Grounds designs. There's Hollywood's Holograms designs. You can get mugs, you can get shirts, you can get stickers, you can get a onesie for a baby. 
You can get a notebook. You can get a throw rug. You can get pretty much anything you want. So get on there. Tpublic.com. Backslash user. Backslash malfunction. You know? Am I tipping all job. these? Am I tipping the guy down the... No. Hold on one second. What are you doing? <laughs> she has to get something. I'm going to grab a, a soda while she's doing that. All right. You don't... You don't this is... We're, we're not live. Oh, okay. We can cut that out. <laughs> yeah!